上班。What's up, fool? Shout out to Voodoo Glow Scores for bringing the the intro to the What's Up Fool podcast forever, right? They changed their song "Fat Randy" to "What's Up Fool." <laughs> yeah, Rodrigo grew up with those guys. He worked in the record store. Yeah, cheap guy music, dude. Back in That's the day, right. dog. And, yeah, they, they have their own label too, right? They had a Pocho Loco Records back in the day, bro. Like, Pocho Loco. Speaking of labels, bro, like we were talking about Richard Pryor earlier and Ronnie Dangerfield yeah. because um, Jimmy O'Mealy right here, yo, yo. from Venice, California, baby. What up? What up? Suicidal Tennessee. Oh yeah, they were there, bro. <laughs> in the house, the bro. original Doctor. The homie right here, Jose, right? Uh, Jose JB, yeah. Jose JB, the partner in crime, bro, the real partner, yeah, bro. Yeah, That's he's, what he's, fake he's, he's my lover. <laughs> he's my real lover. <laughs> Not a silent partner. He was the guy that was standing outside of high school, bro. He passed out flyers, a big party. Yeah, <laughs> that was us. Awesome. Yeah, Dude, real talk. When I was a like when I was a kid, because we were, um, I have another podcast called History for Fools podcast coming oh, really? up in a, three weeks. We're gonna talk about um, Latinos in cinema, like the. Oh, we're gonna go all the way back oh, that's to badass. when they brought a fucking camera to Mexico. Was it was just, it was eighteen. It was actually 1867 or eighteen seventy six. Somebody brought a, a film to to Mexico City, and they actually they actually showed the first ever movie. In Mexico City, and we're gonna talk about that. Yeah. We're gonna talk about the browning of Hollywood. How, yeah. how yeah, uh, for the first time you see a Prieto <laughs> in a movie, and he drowns black people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wakanda forever. Don't Wakanda. you ever forget? Yeah, it's the Indiano Yora. So <laughs> that's history for fools. So history for fools. We're talking about, um, you know, that we talked about history of comedy and contracts, in and labels. having a being with a label and. We talked about Richard Pryor, how we were talking about earlier, how these albums he had a contract with, was, uh, was, um, what's the name of their label? It was called Laugh Records. Laugh it? Records, right? Okay. And, but Under he, Island. He, he was to get too fucked up, right? And he, he couldn't commit to the contract. So th they would follow him around and put the recorder down and record his set. Because oh, he was, because he was never like if you tell that fool to show up, we're gonna record. He won't be there. Yeah, he won't even show. He up. He won't even show up. No, nah, no way, he, he was know. Drozen was telling us a story one time that so he was following him to a club to because they had a deal with them to record an album and right. it was just taking forever. And one day he couldn't score, so homeboy did his whole set underneath the piano. No, yeah, way. bro. So they and they I'm like, you guys got a recording of that? Yeah, we might release it one day. <laughs> so so they got that recording. They, they had all these albums, right? So when Richard Pryor finally. I guess he could, he did all his albums he was supposed to do. He that's when he the big when the, the big ones came out like the one we know about like Live at the Sunset Strip. Yeah. Every time a new movie, Richard Pryor movie come out or a new comedy album will come out, that company will release two of their old albums. Oh that's hell right. yeah! Hey, and, and, you know, they were brand that new, bro, days, fresh, huh? original material, and those are the ones that we grew up on. Hey, so the old, the, the comedians used to sign to a to a label, bro. They used to sign to many labels, and they were never good. Like, <laughs> the deal was. The guy will give you two hundred dollars, and then he'll just give you a, a box of CDs. That's it, right? That really? they're like you know little fucking shady ass deals, unless you had a name. But I right. heard that the first comedy r record, or the first one of the first deals, was Sinatra started Reprise Records and okay. came out with the Red Fox album. And that oh, was those were the ones that were like the shit, nice albums, opposed to the ones that were from back in the day, like Laugh Records. I, I always, I always want. I thought it was more like film production companies that would. That would sign comedians and do. Only if you're big. Yeah, really. They can make mad money off you. Yeah, you know? right, right, and, right, right. You know, because they can tack it on that name. But right? I wonder. It was crazy. Like no you artist know? development. Because like then. I know that uh, when when um Kiss they they were with that label Casablanca. Yeah, Records, in the beginning. Right? In the beginning, yeah. right? Yeah. And they they were the ones that signed Donna Summers and they signed um fucking um the Village People, right? They were the, the beginning of disco Casablanca Records. They signed um uh, Kiss, right? But um. Anyway, those guys used to get all fucked up too, bro. Oh, fuck <laughs> they were signing anybody, bro. Well, yeah, yeah. Then, then you know, off the success of other fools, thinking they're gonna, you know. Oh, they could, so they yeah. were, I read in that book, bro. I read, yeah. uh, uh, shit, here we go. You got it. I read, back, I read, I read, in, that, yeah. I read in that book. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah, I read good. in that book, right? That um, when um, just say when done, just say when um, Kiss album's gonna come out, right? So there will be like. They'll be like, oh, they're, they're number one, but they were not really. They, nobody. They even they were number one, but Casablanca, they um they fuck with the with the album charts, bro, with the album records. So they, they would just say, you put out a million Kiss albums, right, and you ship them out to the stores. 
fucking Casablanca was saying, we sold a million. The but they're not even sold yet. Yeah, they're not sold. They're not sold yet. Yeah. Well, that was the they, old they, trick. They, that's, that's the old a, trick. It's basically they send right. them to the... They, but all the records company will have their own album, so they start playing them. And then, like, some people start figuring it out. Not Charlie, bro. Yeah. That's well, the, look. Yeah. Well, that, what that's what is timing, your right? um, history on well, that? Well, look. Luckily, Rancho Mille, we came in at the... Streaming era. At, this was, like, Before? at the conversion okay. of the our live album, uh, of the physical albums to the... Digital. For, to the digital and shit, right? Yeah, but we had CD. a we, man. We spent fucking money on CDs and all this shit, and we did sell a little bit at the beginning of it. But bro, it was like I still have my my attic and my Javitas pan. It's like fucking thirty boxes of each artist that we had because there you go. You had to buy these albums in order for you to start charting, and I was like. Really, bro? Like, this is whack. This is a lie. Because that's like, what I was going to tell you real quick, not to interrupt you, but it's basically yeah. your own consignment. Yeah. yeah. It's your own consignment. So, luckily, we found out of, of how not to get involved with that physical shit. We were like, wait a minute. So, you mean we can bring out an album, we can go to Apple Music, and we can go to Pandora, and because that's the, who existed at that time. At, no, iTunes and Pandora. Yeah. That's and they'll release the music and the album for us. And we don't have to pay them shit? Really? The the people buy it and we don't have to pay them nothing? And they pay us every time you listen to it because you're in an account? I said, shit, we got to get into this, bro. So we started, you know, getting into it and learning about it, learning about it. That's why um, I think Rancho Mille is one of the companies in the music business, period, uh, that is super advanced on the technology of, of uploading music, you know? And till this day, it exists, bro. That that there's fake ass charts, there's fake ass. They're all artists. manipulated, right? Because the, no, the thing is, like, let's say, okay, you own the record label, you own fucking What's Up Records, right? right. And you two own two radios too. <laughs> put it up, put it up there. You own What's Up uh, Foods, and you sign Felipe, and he fucking has a a corrido that's banging right now, right? Everybody wants. Yeah. It. So everybody wants it, and you put him on, right? But then I have a record label, and I have Joe, which is starting, but his shit starts hitting naturally, right? And his shit is like, okay, it's hitting naturally, but his shit is popping. He's bringing in a million views, two million views, 300 million streams, blah, 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 whatever. Then this fool over here is like barely going, but I say, fuck it. I'm going to invest $100,000 in the streams. So I start doing buying all these campaigns and buying all this shit. Now he has 30 million views and he has 10 million views. But he's getting paid for 10 million views and he's getting paid for the real views, which is probably about a million. But it shows that he has three that's 30 million. Right. So it's kind of still manipulating the charts, but the charts are getting smart now and saying, wait, well, we're going with the physical. They figured out already back in the days, bro, you be able to fucking put him at 30 million views and boom, he's number one already. Right now is like they would do. The, 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 the reggaeton music was known for that and hip hop yeah. and pop, right? And, and pretty much everybody, but it was in the Latin music. It was more like the reggaeton that would that would that we would hear that would do that. Like you see, like right? sometimes, like I like I wonder if they sometimes <clears throat> I wonder like did they manipulate uh, YouTube views? Yeah, because of course, I can, there you go. That dude of a dude I never heard of, but and I just I just randomly like I heard he was singing. So I went to go look him up because they were having a by a bachata convention at the hotel, remember? Yeah. <laughs> so I looked it up. It was some guy named Romeo Santos from the Bronx. You heard of him? Yeah. Fuck course. it. One billion views. Yeah, bro. dude. It's yeah, like, that, that guy, I mean, that's believable. Because incredible that guy, shit. That guy's filling up stadiums. Grew up in uh, bro, the Bronx. In the Bronx. Without even learning how to speak good English, bro. <laughs> yeah. Puro coñazo. Yeah, huh? puro coñazo, bro. Bachata, man. So where you guys got started? You guys got started in... You grew up in Venice. You grew up in Venice. No, I grew up in Watts, California. Oh, that lay. Yeah, yeah he's from the projects and shit. Right. You know, throwing chingazos out, bro. bro. Sí, no, but this fool grew up in Venice Beach, bro. He was a kid during the race riots, bro. And, yeah, that was crazy. And fucking Venice and Torrance, bro. How was yeah, that, bro? You know what? Look, I, it was I got a Venice. I, it was, bro. It was a crazy era, bro. You grew up in the eighties in Venice. Well, Beach, see, bro. In, in, in Venice, back from the seventies, eighties, and nineties. It was it was ran by well you know the majority of the race that lived there was Mexican and black, but it was more Mexican than everything you know. The short lines. Yeah, the short line Crips. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know V thirteens. You know well, that was fool. A, when we were kids. A, if you be, like, if you're break dancing and you do and you do any moves that that makes it look like you're doing a, a like, a, like a blood sign, you get jumped. Yeah. You show with red yeah, shoelaces, yeah. you get jumped. Even if yeah. you're not black. 
If you're not yeah. feeling, yeah. you, you are the job. <laughs> and, and, and you know it was cool because you know at Venice Beach, bro, it was like, it was a, it was. I, I could say it was a fucking experience, bro, because I grew up in the beach, so it, it's like you had, you were surrounded with gangs, which was the only white. But what was crazy is that only the outskirts of Venice was white people. Inside in the neighborhood, there was no fucking white people, bro. There was no, you know, no disrespect to them, but. You know, there was no white people, bro. In the interior, right there. But yeah, but the outskirts, it was like a mile radius of Venice. Like, like non traba. The only white people that were in the hood is that were buying. They were going in there to buy dope. That was it, bro. If they were there, yeah, he's going to buy out. dope. Yeah, in and out, bro. And um, you know, I grew up with the skateboarders, the surfers, the body, the bodybuilders. Yeah, Dogtown uh, area, right yeah, there. Dogtown. You know, with the Z boards when they first came out. Damn. You know, back in skates. the, I tried that that surfing, bro. I, I was no fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fucking ate shit. So I, I did body surfing for a little bit. I definitely skateboarded Tight. though for sure. Yeah, you know, dude. what's that like, bro? Growing up and having the board work right there. It was a shit, bro. I was See smoking weed at fourteen. Chicks, well, that, well yeah. that's what yeah, I was gonna yeah. go. I'm, I'm probably seen some, you know, like a, get chulada, compadre. Bro, it was. You know, you know what was the best part when we used to go and we would play handball and ba and and basketball and and they had the courts right there, right yeah. for handball. So when we would walk back home, we would walk through the beach. But you know for what? To look for that for the for the girls that were laying down topless. Oh, yeah, bro. Damn, the first time bro. man with the, the plan the, the over here. The first time I ever saw a woman topless, I like went crazy. Like she showed up, her her boobs came out with a big areola. Was in Venice Beach. Of course. And after that, I, I, seen I, in the I, movie I, I wanted to go, bro. I was wanted to go. And when they would, we would see him laying down with their bra off, the boca abajo. Man, we would run through there. Kick dirt at them and they'll get out. <laughs> throw your ball shit, shit and throw it back. That's funny. Yeah, bro. I mean, it was, you know, it was Venice Beach was a definitely an experience, carnal. Venice was, Beach, you don't go there after six, bro. Yeah. Like you don't go there in the morning because there's too many homeless people waking up. Now it's crazy, huh? Yeah. Now it's, bro. I mean, I, uh, I'm i actually buying a pad. I'm buying my neighbor's pad that I grew up with right there. Uh, one of the only black families left in, in Venice. Really? Yeah. That, they all I got mean, gentrified out. Yeah, every, everybody got out. And, you know, it was fucked up. They lied to everybody, bro. They told everybody, oh, in Playa, in Playa Vista, they built all these condos, and they told everybody, oh, you're going to be able to buy a new house right there. You're going to be able to buy an apartment. Look, condos, when condos were being popular, you know, and they were coming up, you're going to be you're gonna be able to buy a, a condo there for 150, 200,000. So everybody was like, hell yeah, you know? We're going to build a new neighborhood, new houses, new everything. Sure enough, bro. Once you got in there, fucking houses were fucking 800, a million. You sold your pad for 300,000. How the hell were you going to be able to get over there? You know, there's got no hand out. So that's why they got, you know, everybody moved to Inglewood. <laughs> Inglewood and Lennox, bro. I ended up in Lennox. That's where we moved to. Oh, yeah. from, oh from that time. Yeah. All right. Okay. I was 21 when I moved to Lennox. And Lennox is fucking. If you heard of Lennox, Lennox is Mexico, bro. I, I used to spray the library right there. That little, that little, little oh, ass yeah? library, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah, dude. So right next to the fucking sheriff station, huh? Yeah, yeah. 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 Hell yeah. yeah so. <laughs> So I grew up in Lennox and Lennox was a shit, bro. The, bro the people in Lennox, they gang bang to their 100, bro. <laughs> I was going to say, they used to have Lennox a, to the heart. a big old fat security guard. And the lady's all, yeah, we got a big ass rat. And I'm all, how big is it? And she's all. <laughs> <laughs> it was a security Yeah, guy. bro. The funny shit right there. Was, Little ass neighborhood, though. Yeah, it was, it was, it was cool moving, gr growing up there. And, you know, my dude my dude over here grew up in uh, Watts. Watts. So, you know. It's, Went to it's school in Gardena. Yeah, he, we, we met. Uh, he had a, a taco business in Inglewood. Yeah. So we used to hang out in Compton is where we kept our horses. And that's where we started doing flyer parties. Yeah. Together in the city of Compton. Yeah, so horses? Compton. Yeah, yeah we do. In You're Compton right. back in the day? We still have some there, yeah, too. He's still, he still in Compton yeah. Cowboys, Compton bro. Cowboys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right there. Those, those Compton Cowboys. Yeah. And were you guys, are you guys are all like chattels? I must have been embarrassing, huh, bro. Oh, man, he goes, you're getting dropped off on a horse, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be embarrassed with my mom's fucking little orange V-dub, bro. With, but. with the apron? Bro, I was embarrassed my dad would pick up, would, would drive us to school. And he'll get out. His fucking show was all ripped and shit. <laughs> yeah, I remember I just like told my mom. My mom would be like, "Hey, uh, you know, uh, wait for me over there in the corner, you know." And like, she'll be right there with her apron, oh, <laughs> con yeah. you know. I mean, back in the days, you know, we were we were young doing that, man. And then it was like we were embarrassed, but right now, shit, we respect that, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, it was bro, badass. Cool, that pinche apron, bro, you know, that put in work, bro, you know. <laughs> they dropped me off in the yegua, eh? <laughs> <laughs> pinche burro, yeah. Yeah, that was cool, man. But you guys were always in, uh, always into that charro culture with your parents and all that? Or you guys grew up into that? Remember, um, how about mm -hmm. in, like, in the, 
I guess in 97, right? You were 17. Remember back in the people were throwing those parties, bro. They were everybody was wearing those pinches. It was right after the rebel scene. The quebradita. Sí, right after the rebel scene. Yeah. It was the quebradita scene, bro. Yeah. Fools were wearing bells in Sinaloa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michoacan, yeah. local yeah. party. Well, 90, that, that started in 94, 95, 96, yeah. 97, 98, the quebradita. 94 you seen was, that on, was on the trucks, too. Like, yeah, you always seen the, everybody had their, you know, pinche yeah. Jalisco, well, Sinaloa, like, all that shit. So yeah, part, I remember when I was a kid and, I, and we were talking about, this is what we were talking about, the podcast. Yeah. That you don't see this anymore. Or maybe, I don't know if you see it now. But when I was in high school, I wrote um, Theodore Roosevelt High School, 456 South Matthew Street, Los Angeles, <laughs> California, 90033. But anyways, <laughs> bro, there'll be, there'll be dudes that were already out of high school, 20, probably they're 21. And Going under, to the flyer party? <laughs> passing out flyers outside of the school, dog. <clears throat> Yep. Like they, when I was a kid, there was no such thing as your mom. There was no line of cars picking up nobody, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody walked and you fucking took your chances, bro. Yeah. And big after the sad, I'll jump your ass. <laughs> yeah. On the way home. So um, they were passing out flyers. Bro, you can't get away with that shit now, huh? Yeah. Like an like, older than 18 year old man passing out flyers. Nah. You're looking like no. a groomer, fool. But I think it's easier. I, Instagram, shout out to no? <laughs> 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 the, 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 the crew was called Teddy Boys. Teddy yeah. boy. And the Senor the Inc. The Inc. Well, well, I started. The corporation. I started doing flyer parties at 14 and 15. Oh, damn. But I started with with uh, with 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 raves I mean, and house music and electronic and fucking trance oh, and all shit, that shit, bro. right? <laughs> and I would mix it with disco and hip hop, you know, rap back in the day. So um, that when I started, I started doing that shit. But then I emerged into the Quebradita, you know, because it was popping. In 97? So 97, 96, 97. It hit big. Yeah. It, hit it a, went well, big. Why, why do you think it hit so big? Because also, I think also like back then, you know, if you look, if you go back, the immigration law was kind of weak back then, bro. They were letting everybody in back <laughs> yeah, then. It was good. Because they were letting everybody in, bro. Because for the first time, because normally you'll see like hardworking immigrants, you know, like from El Salvador, Nicaragua, whatever, Mexico. Yeah. But this time, bro, you were actually seeing paisas that didn't want to work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you see over mm. downtown LA, already, they were from 18th Street already, bro. You know? They were, they were chicken yeah, out they were chicks. They were from a canton. Yeah. Like, they came here to be professional gangbangers. That's it. Yeah, and take it back. And take That's it back. what happened. You know, they a lot of uh, gang members came here and went back. Over. But you know what? When I started doing flyer parties, it was that music. And then when I found out about the Quebradita, I started getting into it. And I really liked it, you know, because my sister, she got me into it. She was older. And, you know, she was listening to the Vallarta show, La Banda Mobile, oh, and everybody. So Banda she Mobile, started dog. taking me to, uh, there was a pueblo in Jalisco called Huchitlan. And they would call it el, 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 um, el La Fiesta del Pueblo right here at, at uh, in, by the airport, by the LAX. It was a hall that they rented right there, and they would do events. They would bring ban Banda Vallarta show and all them. So I started kind of getting familiar with it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do a fucking flyer party. De esta madre, bro. Sure enough, I did a flyer party, and then I got into a party crew, and... They were all fucking lazy, so I kept doing my shit, you know. And I, I, I went from doing that, and um, luckily, like around nineteen, I started working with a with a famous guy, you know. Well, he wasn't famous when I met him, but then he got famous like at eighteen, nineteen. I was that age. He was always two years younger than me, and he was friend. He was brother. He was brothers of another friend of mine that did events too. He would do flyer parties también. So he was like, "Hey, bro, you know my carnal sings, blah blah." We got together and. We started kind of working with him, you know. I was a bag boy, everything, you know. I was fucking get, giving him drinks, fucking todo, todo. I would do, you know, iron his clothes, you know. I was a gopher and shit. You're like Henry Hill and Goodfellas. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was that dude. Tupac, yeah, for, for the digital underground. For the digital <laughs> underground, yeah. And then fucking, uh, I just continued it. I did it to like maybe 24, maybe, and I got 25, I think one day. I got, I got tired of that shit, you know. Mexico here, he got big. He became a platinum artist. He was good, man, and. And uh, I, I just decided, you know, to, to, to quit, bro. I said, nah, I'm going to quit this shit. You know, I'm, 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 I'm done. Right at the same time when I did that, I quit smoking weed, too. So that was <laughs> fucked up, you know? So I got into the taco business. I got into the taco business at that age and had a little bit of money saved up right there. I opened a little taco shop. And, Where at? In Lennox. In Lennox, bro. So right streets. there in your neighborhood. Yeah, right there in Lennox. On Lennox and fucking uh, Hawthorne. Damn. Right on Lennox and Hawthorne. Yeah. Right, yeah, right on Lennox and Hawthorne, right in front of the fucking uh, 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 Top Value. Now I think it's called Gonzalez or something, but it was it was Top Value back in the days. Yeah, yeah, bro, and it was it was fucking it's a crazy business, bro. You know, it was it was it was good, and um, kind of went through there. So I ended up buying. I used to kick at my pad. So it's crazy how I met this fool because 
I used to I used to cook on my pad, right? Just to prep all the food. Yeah, and then they fucking one day the health department fucking showed up, bro. <laughs> Damn. And you know, hey, you got two ovens, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my fucking neighbor, bro, because I stopped giving him free tacos. Oh, <laughs> motherfucker, it goes bro. To show, dude, no bro. good deed goes unpunished. Bro, you yeah. Turn up in, eh? yeah that, and and you know what was <laughs> fucked up? That the guy from the health department told me, bro. Damn. He goes, oh, oh you're it's supposed to be anonymous, <laughs> huh, bro? Yeah. Now he told For me, sure, he goes, man. oh, uh, Cindy, though they're good. Yeah, uh, what do you say? One hundred six zero nine. I I lived at one hundred six zero nine Truro, uh, uh, Truro Avenue. So I think it was one hundred six eleven. Snitch so, place. Yeah. So <laughs> that motherfucker threw it. He goes, oh, one hundred six eleven. Uh, said. That you're cooking out of here and blah blah blah. Oh go, my god! This motherfucker, bro. I saw told him, "Hey, motherfucker, you know why you snitch on me?" So they told me I gotta go. So I had to fucking rent a spot to to cook my food because I couldn't cook at the commissary, where we parked the fucking trailers, the taco trailers. So you find you get to go to one of those kitchen places? No, I got a little little restaurant that I found out it was for sale and had a little bit of money saved up. So I said, you know what? Let me. I started my taco business started doing okay, you know. So it was I was able to. But a restaurant back then, you know, you could buy a restaurant for ten grand, you know. But ten yeah, grand yeah. was fucking ten grand. Yeah, yeah. you know, hundred so, grand now. Yeah. So I ended up, I ended up buying that little restaurant, and I was able to cook, do everything there. I was good now, and um, I used to hang out right there too. You know, my like a little hangout, whatever. And then he shows up because of another friend of mine. He wanted to actually meet me because well, I, I wanted to meet him because uh, I was a big fan of the guy that he would manage, that he would carry his luggage for. Yeah. Him. So I was a big fan of his. He was around my age. The the artist was, and my friend said, "Hey, uh, I know the manager. You want to meet him?" I said, "Oh yeah, I want to meet him. Let's go. I'll pick his brain. You know, I've I've always been into music." So yeah. I said, "I want to meet him." So I went and met him, and this guy was in the back cooking tacos and stuff. And yeah, he said, "Hey man, you know, you got to meet him. I want to introduce you to a friend." He said, "Yeah, I got a minute." So we came out. He brought his laptop, and we started watching some YouTube videos. Yeah, YouTube was like cool. barely starting. Yeah, man. bro, that was when like fucking like I would go on there, you know, and it was cool. I mean, almost be that was like chingazos and all that shit, yeah. you know. So <laughs> yeah, we started yeah. joking Bump around. Fights. <laughs> yeah, 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 all that. Yeah. The prison fights, remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah. God, bro. Yeah, so um, that's where we met, you know, and, and a friend, his friend introduced me to me, which was a mutual friend, Victor, and uh, he was like, "Yo, like," uh, he was like, "Yo, dude, it'll be cool. We do something right here for my birthday." Blah blah. When's your birthday? In July, July what? July twenty first. Oh, what the fuck? That's my birthday. So we ended up fucking becoming good homies because of our birthday and shit. Damn. You know, so and um and we started with two horses, bro. So the singer that I worked for, he owed me some feria and he paid me with fucking horses. <laughs> right? Him so and his cook them made tacos. Nah, fuck no, bro. I fucking rode those motherfuckers, bro. <laughs> yeah. What kind of horses were they? Beautiful? Um, one of them was a Nastic horse, and one was a quarter horse, right? Quarter horse, yeah, yeah so horse. um so I told him, hey, fool, I got two horses and blah, blah. And, <coughs> and uh, he was like, oh, I like horses. I was like, let's go riding. And we want to go ride the next day. And and um, I, you know, fucking, it's expensive to fucking take care of a horse. Bro. Oh, all that shit's yeah. fucking yeah, expensive. Yeah, fucking that expensive, bro. That's like, you start still, stealing hay and shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's why yeah. I asked you, did you grow up with that? Because I know like no, people that do, like, they shoot, go through a lot of money, money bro. Hay, right? You know yeah. They go through this much hay a week, huh? Feeding bro, them and housing them. More? They eat a lot. No, it's a whole barrel. Two stacks, right? Two barrels? I spend a barrel a day. A whole, a whole a hay sack a day. Yeah, and that's... Yeah, yeah. But you have, like, fucking... When that's horse. a one, ho one house. We we have two houses uh, that... How many horses do you have? You have fucking... 14. 14 and also, if they get 14 sick, horses bro. in Compton? Yeah, he has fucking 14, 14 horses. horses now. In Compton? In Compton. Yeah. Where my horses so, at? <laughs> <laughs> Let me ride your horse. But the other thing, too, they get sick, bro. You have to have, like, a veterinarian. Yep. There's a lot oh, of yeah, shit that goes yeah. on with I mean, like, it's like a fucking grown-up dog. Yeah. yeah, well, dude, I know some dude with his horse that dude, you couldn't talk to this fool for three months, bro. He was yeah. up to the curb, bro. Yeah, he was, it was, yeah. A, it was a giant fucking yeah. dog. Uh, but anyways, you know, this fucker we met, and, uh, and, and we ended up fucking riding the horses, and I'm like, yo... Uh, he's like, oh, I really like it. I said, you want to buy it? <laughs> you know, so he was like, well, I ain't got no fucking money. But I was like, well, let's trade for something right there. I was, he was like, what? And he was like, I got a laptop. I said, fuck it. So we traded the horse for a laptop. Horse for yeah, so I needed a laptop for my business, you know? So I ended up getting a fucking laptop. And that was pretty cool. So um, that's why there's two horses in our logo. If you see our logo, we have two yeah. horses. Hell yeah, dude. And um, <clears throat> we just kept going. And then they kicked us out where we had the horses. Who fucking. snitched on you this time? That fucking the, the dude that lived there. He was a yeah. fucking hater, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, my god, bro! <clears throat> so what happened? Fucking we'll, we'll, hater ass Sergio. Fucking yeah, bag Sergio's it. a bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's his full name. <laughs> no, yeah, we, we used to hang out. I mean, we, we'll, we'll bring friends and stuff. You know, we'll have carne asadas, whatever. But he would always get mad because we'll have a good time in his backyard, and it was his backyard, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, so he he just said, "Hey, you know, you guys got to find another place to, to no, do all this." Check this out, bro. So you know, just. 
put your horses somewhere else. You know? And this motherfucker didn't even say, hey, get out next week. He said, get out fucking now. today. Yeah. Damn. I mean, <laughs> mean in so, the horn. But, huh? I know. He was a fucking piss, bro. Yeah, so, that, but that was the move that I think uh, helped us out a lot because we ended up getting yeah, thank, our, our thank own you, yard. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you, Sergio. Yeah, <laughs> our own yard. So that's where we started doing all the backyard gigs that kicked everything off. The whole name and everything. We, what we, city was this? Compton. 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 Right there on Greenleaf and uh, Wilmington. Yeah. With the motherfucking heads cut off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right there. Where, where you find the body. Because, dude, mm-hmm. I was telling this fool, the first time I heard of you guys, it was in that little fool. I seen a video. Me and Pariente, my little homie, um, um, showed mm. me. And it was that dude, Nathaniel, uh, Nathaniel Cano, Cano. Cano. Talking shit on Pepe Aguilar. And the yeah. only reason I know is because my parents are from Zacatecas. Yeah. They're big on Tony Aguilar fans. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> so you were like, fuck that kid. No, no. <laughs> no, the thing that made me laugh, because I don't want to repeat because I don't remember it perfectly. Yeah. But homeboy, dude, he we're all stone, bro. And like homeboy kept on playing it. And we couldn't believe somebody was dissing him. And yeah. not that he sh- how you should be dissed, but you know yeah. when somebody bags on your ass and yeah. they get all the details? Yeah. It yeah, was yeah. like that, bro. Yeah, that was crazy, so, bro. It was and crazy. then when it started, bro, until like now, you know, maybe collabing or whatever, like it's it's a bad, badass story and that's how I heard you guys. It, it was crazy, man, because that that's really what um uh a little bit of controversial was what, what threw us on another level, you know? That it it was crazy because when we first started, it was we own it was a fucking housewarming party, bro. We got our own ranch, we had our own yard, you know, we we're fucking hell yeah, let's do a party, fool. And he invited his homies, I invited mine, and and it just became a little party where a little, it was, like, it was like 500 people. Yeah, <laughs> for real. but this was on Christmas Day on the first, right? On the no, first, no, no, sorry, on, on, on New, New Year's Day. First, on yeah. the first, like right on the first, I was like, fuck it, we ain't got nothing to do, you know, let's do it. So we ended up, people started coming, but people would come in brand new shoes and it was fucking dirt, bro. Yeah, I didn't know. But we thought people were going to be pissed, bro. People were like, yo, when the fuck is the next one, bro? And we're like, oh shit. So I was like, hey, bro, I used to do flyer parties back in the days. Let's do a party. And he was like, really? Yeah, let's do it. So we organized it. We put it together and we did a fucking... Now, what you really said was, hey, you know, if we would have charged 20 bucks to get in, we would have made 10 grand. Yeah. Like 500 (laughs) people in this motherfucker. I said, let's do it. Yeah, bro. So we we did that and... And it was crazy because it was a bunch of us, bro. It was like eight partners, right? So, so it was six total, yeah. Six. So six before partners. any music, anything, you guys were promoting big ass parties, yeah. big ass fiestas. Yeah, big that's ass how shows. we started as promoters. Yeah, bro. We, we became promoters for like three years before we became a yeah. record label. Yeah. Yeah, but but what happened was that us as as promoters, it was crazy because um, we used to make a lot of artists hot, right? We used to like artists and say, okay, here's fucking George fucking Blow. I yeah. like his music. Come on, let's put him in. So we would put him in the flyer parties. And we put them in the in the events, and next thing you know, this fucker becomes famous. And the com- it was a small community listening to these type of corridos, right? And um, back in the days, the, com- the corrido business wasn't big. It had already kind of like died out. Hip hop was at its finest, time, bro. Right? You yeah. know, estaba uh, Nelly was popping. You know, so every it was hip hop was at its hottest. You know. The Cash Money Records Duranguense and all that shit was was hot du- in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, the musica duranguense was hot, bro. Yeah, we hated that, that shit. Yeah. So that it, it didn't movie. get a hot to two thousand again, huh? Because in two thousand four it was getting hot, huh? What the corrido music? No, corrido music started getting hot again. Like two thousand six, two thousand seven. That's nah, the like, best. I, I like mean, two thousand four. They killed that that two, kid. That kid died in a car accident. Who's that? Who, uh, Adan? Adan? Chalino son? Adan yeah, and the other one too. Um, yeah, Adan, yeah. Adan, 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 died before, yeah, and, and then the, and the little little Sinaloense kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He died in a car accident. But I, I think it was an era where that was more like an LA era. That LA was era. like a, it was just LA, like yeah. like. And then he started hitting outside of LA, and and wasn't popular outside of the LA area, you know. And and, and till La Que Buena came in that radio station, and then they started playing a lot of the corrido from that time, you know. And it was like the the Chalino style. Right, raw. it was like like real raw, raw. shit, yeah. and that's the that that, that the dude with the big old matroyeta. What's his name? Oh, if, if, uh, pinche el, oh. el general. <laughs> no, no, no. Commander. El Commander. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. well, here we go. Bro. That fool, bro. Yeah. Should have with a fucking. Uh, with a vest. I saw that fool with a, at, at a premiere. Like, I never heard of him. Yeah. But uh, I saw that fool should have with a fucking vest. Yeah. Pinche cañones. Yeah. Fucking, dude. Escoltas, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, who the fuck is this? Dude, Gene. Sold out. Yeah. He sold well, out. I don't know where the fuck he was, but he sold the fucking shit out. So, so well, his first gig, yeah, we, yeah. We, we, he, it was with us. Shut yeah, up, dog. Yeah. Yeah. What year was that? Oh, fuck. 2008? 2000? Yeah, I remember 2008? that. 2008? Yeah, I remember that because they were doing a, a documentary and they shot that little scene. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. Okay, well, it was crazy because we would ha- we would get Commander Gerardo Ortiz, 
fucking who was we tres and a lot of Gerardo Ortiz when uh, we did a show with him in the beginning. Okay. He, he had a homeboy that passed away. He got killed. Was it yeah, Ramiro, no, Caro? Huh? Ramiro Caro? Ramiro yeah. Caro. Yeah, Ramiro Caro. Yeah, we did a show with him. Yeah. Um, they used to be a an, uh, Richard Chan. They used to be an Asian guy. Yeah, they used to yeah. work with yeah, 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 Chinito. Yeah, 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 he speaks yeah, yeah. better Spanish Chinaloa. than me. El Chinaloa. 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 Yeah. yeah, we all did a show <laughs> together <laughs> in yeah. fucking the Ice House. Oh, and fuck, cool, I remember... Oh my god! I remember I did a horrible gig where I kidnapped everybody, bro. <laughs> oh shit! Was that the one in like uh, in uh, Imperial? Central. Yeah, Imperial. Valley. And then the dude kidnapped us, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna kill him with? Yes, the we the we, we we know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 Well, when, when we did we so we started blowing up these artists, and then they would they would blow up, and 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 then they won't let them come back and and do a gig with us. No mames. Because we were promoters, but yeah. these guys started getting so we made a lot of fucking record labels blow up, <laughs> right? And I was like, fuck these motherfuckers, bro. And so we just <laughs> got tired of that shit. And then next thing you know, um, we said, fuck it. We're, let's do a record label, bro. And and uh, we decided to create our own record label and started signing our own artist. You know, that's yeah. that was because that was the whole reason behind that. Because we, we said, fuck it. We, we're just going to keep making more guys rich. Why don't we keep it and we yeah. make ourselves rich? Fuck it. You know, I mean, we didn't know. Them. And um, sure enough, it took us longer, though, bro. Like. You know, we couldn't find no more artists. We already had started a movement. So we found these guys named Los Hijos de Barron, bro. And they, th those guys kind of like took us to another level. Um, they, they were more like guitarras, you know, just three guitars and, and more campirana music, more real ranchero music, you know? Sexo and all that uh, no, it was a 12 string, oh, the 12, okay. 12 string, six string, and a bass. Oh, okay. So uh, they started and, and they would sing about Cuco Rios. More like Carlos de Jose. Yeah. yeah. So at that moment, Right before we launched Hijos de Barron was when fucking the corridos were about cutting heads and all that shit. It got like, it got yeah. dirty, bro. And I say, you know what? Our music is going to shit. Everything we've been doing is kind of falling apart. And these guys that own these record labels, they don't fucking know how to run this business, bro. They just got they got lucky. You know, it's like it's like if somebody right now signs Felipe, oh, I made Felipe. Like, no, you fucking didn't. He's already who he is. You yeah, know, yeah. that's what was happening with these labels. So. When that started going on, we said, fuck it, we're going to create our own artist. And we started looking for new movements. And our goal was to make our music and our culture in L.A. pop all over the world. Because everywhere we go, they see Mexicans as like, you're not fucking Mexican, bro. What do you mean? Yeah, I am. Mexicans don't look like you. How do Mexicans look like? Oh, you guys are short, dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fucking, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you're supposed to be wearing a sombrero. same fucking song, bro. Yeah, yeah so um, we made it pop, man. And just, we started getting lucky with a lot of these artists and... We started working our asses off, bro, and and now thank God, man, we're the number one record label in the world, bro, in Latino music. Fuck yeah, dude. You know, so that's pretty dope, man. You know, to have some fucking Mexicanos straight out of fucking L.A., bro. You know, it's it's beautiful, man. Rancho Humilde music. Rancho Humilde, as a company, yeah, as a whole. We do management. We do uh, we do uh, publishing. We do uh, distribution. We do distribution. We do everything, bro. So yeah. the first time I met them, bro, we we're doing. I was doing. Um, I was chilling in my house, doing nothing, <laughs> and I get a call. For my agent, they're doing this big old but this beer was it show tecate, for Zoom. Right? Yeah, yeah, for tecate, yeah. dog. It was, and everybody had to be tested for COVID oh, and all fuck, this. I remember it me. was all out. It was outside event, bro. And then um, I meet I meet him. He's one of the people. I'm the host, bro. And they got people. They got people everywhere, bro. They got um, this dude in Corpus Christi. He's doing his own DJ. And I, I forgot his name. I think oh, he's related. He's related to um, Ah 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 yeah. Cumbia Kings. <laughs> yeah, the Cumbia Cumbia King. King. <laughs> yeah, he's the son. He's the son of the Who Selena's brother. He did something. Yeah, he did some some type of um, reggaeton crevada and shit. Yeah, but I remember. I remember we, yeah. we was that day. Well, and then his his artist shows up, bro. What was it JOP? Yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah Fuerza at, Regida, huh? Huh? ¿En dónde era? In, uh, right here in the valley. Oh, uh, Fuerza Regida. They're Fuerza, from yeah, Fuerza Fuerza Regida. Regida, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they showed up, bro. That fool shows up in a car better than anybody on the set, dog. <laughs> <laughs> he showed up in a helicopter, bro. He showed up with an electric helicopter, bro. They even made it made no noise. <laughs> it made no noise. <laughs> now, that fool Tesla, showed up with a silent. Tesla, bro. That shit opened up with the fucking Batmobile, bro. Yeah, yeah. I remember his black. <laughs> Yo, it opened up and money flew out, bro. 
Yeah, he was actually one of the first ones I ever seen, bro. Like, bro, they had room for everybody, even the tuba player in there. The tuba player in there. <laughs> it was everybody With the tuba. <laughs> With the bro, tuba. I never heard of them, but everybody was chatting because everybody knew who the fuck they were. They're all blowing it yeah, up. They, they, they went Yeah, bro. They, they, they sing it. Like, <laughs> 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 oh, you're talking about El Radio Un Cochinero. <laughs> <laughs> that song is but fucking viral, bro. They're, they're young, but they like like if you close your eyes and put turn your back, you sound like you, it sounds like you're listening to some forty year old motherfucker, but they're yeah. like in the, in the early twenties. Oh, yeah. dude, coming down with some mean philosophy. But it's tight, bro. Because <laughs> I was telling this fool, like uh, the same little fool told me about that Fuerza Regida. He's all no, right. buddy, because they go ride those uh those little four wheelers. Those fucking, yeah, 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 yeah. And dude, they, dude, they fucking yeah, glamis, and dude, he's all bro. Rasa took all that shit over. Now they're selling everything, but they just be bumping the newer, the newest fools. Like, yeah, you you know it's what's all about you, like you know what's crazy, constant bro. new shit with that. This is what's badass about, I think, what, what we created is that, and I take very, uh, we, we should, and we do take very much pride in, in, in what the culture we've created. Because, excuse me, I have a 19-year-old daughter at home uh, with a 13-year-old boy, right? She has a 13-year-old No, boy. I, have a, I have a 19-year-old <laughs> daughter and a 13-year-old boy. Been putting in work, player. Yeah, doing it. <laughs> and, then, and, um, and, 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 I'm, and I'm very guilty that they don't know Spanish at Bro, They're don't good. feel bad, bro. I have three kids that don't know each other, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got one right here, bro, paying our child support. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever feel bad, dog. I have two kids with the same that name. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing. I was like, fuck, I don't know. I'm going to do this interview. I'm going to be <laughs> shitting in my pants in there. <laughs> nah, dog. But he was funny, bro. No, nah, but you know. So my, I'm very guilty, Karnak, because. They don't know fucking Spanish that good, you know? And and I was like, this can't be happening, bro. Then my sister's kids don't know Spanish. Then my friend's kids don't know Spanish. But it happens, dog. It does. That's how it is, you it get is. lost in the bro, wind, bro. People, let's tell you, bro. Today, somebody put a TikTok video, and it was the white, a white guy, right? You know, somebody, some, some fucking foodie. And they were showing that tostada. <laughs> and they, they that started one. off the word like this. Have you guys ever had a flat taco ever? What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> I heard of the flat earth. The rocks are went crazy, yeah, bro. Yeah, I said, Tostada, yeah. you white motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. And hey, everybody we, went crazy. What about the, the pozole from that girl? What's her name? Oh, uh, Rachel the, Ray? Rachel Ray! Oh, my God. <laughs> pozole. That's called guacala, bro. Nah, bro. Yeah. I never seen her pozole, but I seen bad pozole, bro. Yeah. This fucking cholo, bro. I think he just came out of prison. That fool made like, goes, man, you want to make pozole, man? Spread. Forget about all that. You know oh, how, yeah, your, yeah. how your mom cooks up all those... All those um, chili peppers yeah. in the oven and fucking plezo chale home. That's too take too long, eh? <laughs> that fool got all a bunch of enchilada sauce, bro, and poured it in inside some water with fucking consomme and everything that mm. leaf and started boiling it and then put the meat in there in the fucking granos and mm. served it to the homies. But it tastes like tastes like pozole. <laughs> but you could tell, bro, his homies are the kind of kids that. Their mom will feed them a, a taco de mayonesa and leave them alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put them in front of the Malone. TV so you shut up. <laughs> They're know. not from Lennox. Yeah, they have fuck no, bro. Lennox, <laughs> Lennox bro, bro talk, the man. only place I've ever been to where you buy mariscos and they change your tire at the same time, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Since this chick took me one time, time, she took me to eat um, our chiles, yeah. and I was hung over, bro. I was been I've been up for three days, bro, trying to bite my ear for two nights. <laughs> and um, she took me to have my riscos, bro. I want chile, dog. I've never had that, bro. I only had ceviche. You and then, tired. And then and they were and I was eating, bro. And behind me was the gate to the <laughs> auto shop, bro. To the auto shop, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it was like fucking picnic tables, bro. They were fuck. I hear was like from fucking changing the tire, bro. Yeah. Was it was <laughs> it the machinery? one in the backyard? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Was no, it? it was on a, on a very busy street. Okay. But there was a, a ta tallaria, bro. It was in Spanish. It was not in English. <laughs> and, then the, and, then the, and then the fucking um, our chili truck right next to it. it yeah, inside. I know exactly That's what you're talking about. It's so yeah. good, yeah. bro. You, well, you know, in Lennox. Um, Lennox was was one of the, the best marisco spots. Marisco's Mori? Ma, uh, no, no Mori. Uh, dude, I remember Mori was good. Yeah, what, but what? Uh, but marisco's chente. chente. Okay, marisco's chente was on. It, it was no, sorry, it was in Inglewood. Uh, well, the second one was in Inglewood over there on on uh, Imperial and Doty, but the first Doty. one was on 106 and and um 106, 106 in Hawthorne. No, 106 in Hawthorne. It was at a house. 
at Marisco's Don Chente, which was Don Chente. It was a dude. And he had the fucking marisco. He had a whole fucking restaurant going down in his backyard. <laughs> and I mean, the baddest mariscos you could ever, ever have, bro. Mm. Honestly, honestly. And it's crazy because that's who I ended up selling that little restaurant I had. I sold it to him, <laughs> to Marisco's Chente, bro. And um, But right, I, I was right next door to Moni's, bro. Like, he was in one corner and I was in the next one, dude. Yeah, because that once the original spot was real good. We used to spray that spot, too. That's yeah. why we always used to go there. Dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Marisco's Moni. Moni. You guys tour with your artists all over the country? Not no more. No, uh, no, no, no. I, I do it after Zoom, huh? Right? No, no, Before no. It's just too much uh, work. I'm, I'm already old, bro. Yes, yes, do you know? But not I mean? you, but your tour, your yeah. artist tour all over the country. Man, yeah, Fuerza Regida just had an amazing tour. Uh, they sold out over 22 cities in the country. Yeah. Arenas, <laughs> all arenas, man. Sold them all out. I was incredible. I think one we didn't sell out in San Antonio was because of fucking something with the weather. They had a tornado or something. I don't know what the hell. You know, over here, they got fucking all kinds of shit. Do you but, know what's funny about the, the, the culture and, and the music? Is that um, you see these people performing and selling out places where you don't think that nobody's going to show up. Yeah. Like, I was doing a show in Charlotte, North Carolina, at the Comedy Zone. Also, I'll be there in March. And, <laughs> um, and I just whatever, right? You know, I did my thing, you know. We didn't sell out other shows. Maybe just... Friday, Friday, two shows. Saturday, first show, but then, you know, whatever. We didn't sell out. But um, then I, I see, like, uh, I, follow a I follow a band on TikTok, and the guy, I think the lead singer is blind or something. He has curly hair like me and shit. Oh, he's shit. blind, and he, he and then he, he, his video on TikTok, he's singing with the band at a restaurant. Mira chiquitita, cuando, <laughs> que, que, que. Yeah, yeah. whatever, dude. <laughs> But they did a big old arena in fucking Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. Sold out. Mothers, daughters, uncles, grandfathers. Everybody. The whole fucking world was there, bro. You know, you no know what? Gentis cousin was there. No, Gentis cousin. <laughs> you know what tripped me out when I said, oh shit, we really got something cracking? We went to a city in North Carolina, North Carolina called Harmony. Harmony, North Carolina. It was. Fucking, I don't know where it was at, bro. But the we sticks. Drove, bro, with a fucking hotel we stayed at, we stayed at, huh? Yeah, smelled mother. like a cow, bro. Like, it smelled like a rancho. rancho. Dude, inside the motherfucker. Like, you guys have 14 horses. So you yeah, know. so we knew. We were like, oh, shit. So, I mean, where we were at, and we show up to this big-ass fucking arena, right? It was like a, like a rodeo arena, yeah. though. And I told this food, fuck, bro, this shit's big, bro. Like It was fuck. actually somebody's house, remember? Yeah, it was it, it was it was, a, it was a white dude's pad. It was their their property. It's funny, yeah, man. You property. tell these stories, people who don't know shit about travel, they, they hear the south, and all they expect you to say is, "Yeah, it was hard to perform." Because everybody kept yelling, "Build the wall the whole night." <laughs> <laughs> They expect a story like that. Yeah, shit. yeah, they might but it, 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 it always be, it, it, it's always the yeah. positive one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were, it was hard. First of all, they picked me up in a mule. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it was, it was, it was dull, bro. Because we we were at the hotel, and I get a call from one of our <sighs> one of our uh, workers, uh, and it's a female, but she's badass, as in cabrona, you know. So she called me. She goes, hey. This motherfucker doesn't want to pay me fucking the pre-sales, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, why? What happened? She's like, dude, he has like 4,000 tickets in pre-sales. And I was like, what? What? 4,000 tickets? Shit. I told these fools, hey, let's roll. Get ready. Come on. We got to go to the event. They don't want to pay us. You know, so we end up getting to the event and, and the dude's right there arguing. And I said, so, you know what? Fuck you, bro. I said, how many tickets do you have? 4,000 pre-sales. Dude, outside to buy a ticket was another 3,000, bro. And I said, no fucking way. I looked at these fools. I go, I go, dude, well, fuck this dude. If we do the event and we let this guy go to the end of the night, this fucking promoter is going to fuck us, bro. So I said, we have to do something now. So I stepped up and I said, hey, you know what? Fuck it. We ain't doing the event. Event's canceled. Tell everybody, get the hell out of there. Get out of the ticket booth. Get out. We're leaving. Fuck this motherfucker. You're stuck with all these people, bro. Let's go. He thought I was bullshitting, huh? Yeah. We started leaving. Oh, bro, come on. No, he says, I don't give a fuck. Well, fuck it. It's canceled. You know, he tried to be a smart ass at first. It's all right, fucker. We left. So his white man comes. His wife. Or, or, you know, no. And his wife, too. Well, no, they, at first, the white man comes. And they came in bikes, bro. Yeah. And fucking some, you know, some 10 speeds. <laughs> <laughs> like Debo Friday, huh? Yeah, no, it was a white dude. <laughs> <laughs> a whole bunch it. of Mormons. Eh? <clears throat> yeah, some white dude in fucking some little shorts and, you know, cool, uh, you know, chilling. A regular white dude at his pad, you know? And he showed up with his wife. But then, 
we had already talked to the wife of the other dude that was, you know, keep trying to keep the money. She's like, yeah, well, I'm getting a fucking divorce with him. Fuck him. He's, you better be careful with him. So we're like, oh, shit. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, that's good you're canceling on him. You don't nobody would never have the balls to cancel on him. But fuck him, bro, we're leaving. We end up going to the back, and the guy follows us. All right, all right, all right. We'll give you guys the money. So then the, the white guy goes, the owner, he goes, you know what? Well, are you going to give him the money? I'll put the money. But if you don't give it to me, I'm firing you. You're never going to be able to do an event here. And he had, like, all these events. So they... They were able to put our money together, bro, and they paid us, and we continued with the event. But when we were at the event, we had 8,000-some people. Bro, there was no houses around there, dude. Where the fuck those people come from, dude, man? what I said, bro, when we were, we were we did a show in, in Saginaw, Michigan, Sag and, and I was just a host, and it was a Tejano show, bro, La Mafia, and... Like the Five guy Chewy or Calarraga, whatever his name uh, is. Lady Sarga. Yeah. And bro, it was we get there, this redneck guy picks us up named Richard, <laughs> and he gives us joints and they're all funny. He roll he rolled them in in funny zigzags, bro. They were like <laughs> <Comics>. stripes. <laughs> Some of them had Santa Claus on them, bro. <laughs> Anyways, so this dude, um, he's like the guy in charge of all the artists. He goes, Man, he goes, he goes, Yeah, we're expecting at least 18, 1900 people. He goes, from where? from where? I mean, bro, that town, they have a big ass company called DuPont. Mm. And it that town, that DuPont company, it's the whole town, dog. It's all fenced up. And outside of the town, there's like a baseball park, a high school, a football team, and the, the casino that we were at. Oh, but there was shit. nothing else. Nothing. And bro, bro these the fucking Tejanos are. came out of everywhere, bro. But there was like, dude, that was five thousand people, dude. Bro, bro, it had one I of don't... those. Have you ever seen that? I don't know if you've seen like Tejanos dance or they have a. It, it's like a circle. Oh, they go. Yeah. They, they go in a circle. Oh my god! Well, we yeah. were playing. We were placing bets, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Line dancing. Bro, they don't. They dance in a circle, dog. Yeah, they're dancing in a circle. They're dancing. In a circle. It was like, uh, like. They only do that in Texas, right? Yeah, that's country. Yeah. No, but now yeah. they're doing it all over. But it was the, weird, dog. It was like a, a whole, yeah. like a race. Yeah. <laughs> well, now you know because of <laughs> it, I like dancing in a weird way, huh? Yeah, they. they, they I, I can't fucking walk and dance, bro. Fuck that, bro. You know, that's <laughs> side to side. <laughs> that's like, old people dancing. <laughs> yeah, shit. You know, I can barely walk. Hey? Yeah, it's, it was crazy, dude. When we seen that too, and 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 it was badass. But I was like. Dude, fucking Harmony, North Carolina. Harmony, bro. North Carolina. I, I turn around, I looked at this food, and I go. What the fuck, bro? Where the hell these people come from, dude? De donde, de donde salió tanta pinche gente, bro? Yeah, dude. And we were like, hey, dude. Yeah, and crazy, then, bro. I asked the white guy. I was like, hey, bro, where all these fucking people come from? <laughs> fuck, I don't know, but I love them. <laughs> you tell me. Because <laughs> I love them, bro. You know, they get to hang around in my house. You we know? were in, I don't know if it was Tampa or Orlando. First night, nothing but huevitos, bro. Maybe like two Mexicans, two Puerto Ricans, Venezuelans. Saturday night, all Mexican, bro, from nowhere. I said, where the fuck you guys grew up? You got from? And this chola looking chick, Imakli. Imakli. Imakli, Florida, bro. Where the fuck is Imakli? Exactly. Where exactly. the fuck is it, bro? <laughs> by the, the Everglades, bro. Imakli, Florida is where cholos from Texas go to retire, bro. Oh shit. <laughs> we we there's a there's a, another city in, in Florida, right by Miami. What's it called? Uh, Miami City Miami City, I think. No. No, no, no. Como se Florida llama? City? No, 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 no. It's like hem homestead. 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 We, perform, we perform there too. Yeah, Homestead is like all fucking raza, bro. Yeah. Remember we ate at Homestead? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we, we ate in Homestead right now. It, one, one day, it was pura pizza. Dude, we ate the best fucking tacos right there, bro. Yeah, Honestly. Homestead is real. Yeah, it was, it was like, what the hell, Homestead? So everybody would tell us, no, all, you're Mexican? All the Mexicans live in Homestead. I'm like, fuck you. No, I don't, <laughs> fucker. You know, I don't. So it was, it was crazy, man. <laughs> What's up, fool? We got so, um. Jimmy Omile and Jose right here, Joe from you, Rancho Omile Music, people. Right. Shows coming up. Come on, man, this year. These are the shows that are coming up for December, the 2023. The Big Food Tour, January 14, up here at the San Luis Obispo, California. Get those tickets. They're almost selling out. Santa Maria, you know what's up. January 21st, Tucson, Arizona. January 26th or 28th, Charlotte, North Carolina. Comedy Zone, we just mentioned it. February 2nd through the 5th, Pleasanton, California. You know where that is. That's the Bay Area. Yeah. February 9th through 11th, Fort Wayne, Indiana. My first time there. See, people are, are, are going to take a big loss. Anyways, <laughs> February 18th, I'll be in Bakersfield, California. Get tickets That's at FelipeWorld.com. 
That's right. Yeah, that's man. right. Dearborn, Indiana, bro. Sometimes, like, I'll be like, when I when I do a show, and like, where the fuck was I at? <laughs> I was far, bro. Where, where people were asking me, bro, what the fuck are you going there? There's no Mexican over there. And I got a big laugh when I said, yeah, bro, there's no Mexicans in this town, <laughs> but they're in a surrounding city, like fifty miles away, That'll seventy-five drive. miles away. People, man, my fans are coming over here, getting hotels, getting fucking haircuts in this town for the first time, yeah. bringing in money, motherfuckers. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We, that's the, we do, right? You do. When La Raza shows mm. up, they don't, they're not, I got to lie, bro, when black people show up to shows, Raza show up to shows, it's not, it's not like when white people show up to shows. They might go to a TGI Friday, but they ain't buying clothes too. <laughs> like they fucking get haircuts. They shine their shoes. Yeah, they fucking make it happen. They shave their Hell pussies, yeah. man. They, they, they spend they that check. It. Man, yeah. most of the chicks that show to my house, my my house. <laughs> <laughs> Invite me, dog. Show to my house, my shows. They have lotion. Right the, they have lotion in the legs. Eh? <laughs> hey, what do you? Uh, quick question, Carnal. What do you guys? Do you ever talk about? Uh, like orgies and shit and like that uh, uh, on any of your stand-ups and shit like Hell that? Hell yeah, bro. I, I close with the orgy joke. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, I, I talk about how my wife and I were invited to a, a swingers party, bro. Did you went? Well, I did. She didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you had a wait, single she, guy. She had to wait outside, bro. <laughs> she had to wait outside? I had to get some practice. Eh? We talk about yeah. that. We talk about a lot of sexual stuff. Like, um, <clears throat> I talk about how um, I'm, I'm, I'm old school, man. A lot of people don't like hairy vaginas, but I'm like, bring back the big bad Oh, that's the shit, yeah. bro. That's I like, the I, shit. Me, I like I like when a woman takes her underwear off and it looks like Kaepernick is kneeling. <laughs> I'm behind her going, "Blue life matters, bitch." Blue life matters. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, fool? Podcast. Oh it's man, fun. I know that it's tough for you, man, because you you own a music label. You have, you have um, nine hundred eighty thousand followers. Gonna yeah. be a million by the by, by April. You better go to the party, bro, because I'm gonna and, throw uh, a big old million party. Hey, I'm there, bro. All right. I want to do a. Sh- but also, man, Jimmy O'Meal has a show. Watch it. It's on YouTube Live. What's the show? Uh, it's uh, Humilde desde abajo. Es desde abajo. So Con Jimmy Humilde presents desde abajo. Uh, we're actually going to start season two. They have a live band. In March. Yeah, and cars a and everything. Yeah. And a big yeah. old party afterwards. Yeah, it's fucking yeah. It's lit. It's oh, lit. Yeah, it's yeah. with Amazon. And yeah, we do it with Amazon. And we also uh, do it through, uh, through YouTube. But uh, yeah, season two should be coming in March, man. Hopefully. I can't wait, man. You Maybe. guys film right, live right there from the Mexican Yeah, Beverly it goes live. We, we're actually live on Twitch, bro. Okay. We broke the live stream record. Really? Yeah, man. bro. We broke the fucking live. And I was on it, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that day because it was Nathanael Cano too, right? Remember? Yeah. So um, Nathanael Cano and Felipe, we broke the record that day, bro. Um, so there, Another the, young band. Yeah. So the biggest, the big, the biggest stream um, record they had there was from a gamer. And it was like a year and a half ago, and they had 250,000 live viewers. Fuck. We, we had over 450,000 live Damn. viewers, bro. That, that guy looked at me, and he goes, the next, the next show we did, the fucking president of Twitch was at our show. And they were like, dude, we're here. We're going to call like, it Rancho Twitch. Yeah, Rancho <laughs> Twitch. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I don't From know. If, tweaking to Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> Start tweaking it. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it's just a ticket. Hell yeah. I remember... Um, it's a fucking danger dust. Hell house. yeah, man. <laughs> Where people find you on Instagram? JimmyOmilde.rh. Check us out right there. Yeah. You know, Jimmy.rh and Jimmy Omilde. We're trying to get that million, so go follow us, man. Come on. We're going to throw a big people, party. 20,000 more followers. What's yeah. up, Phil? Put up that news story, Rodrigo. Tell us what happened. Uh, with the Costco, Karen? There it is right oh, there. Read oh, it to us, Rodrigo. This is seriously what's uh, wrong with uh, this uh, county? Okay. Country. Uh, this receipt was in the uh, shopping cart. So here. This go. receipt was a, it's a shopping receipt this lady picked up, and they spent all that money with, with, with food stamps, and it, she got mad. And she was trying to expose it and saying that that receipt, that why do people let people buy lobster and steaks with the uh, EBT cards? Mm-hmm. And it turns out it was this bitch's EBT card. <laughs> and oh. it turns out some of the pictures of the cooked meat was her pictures of the cooked meat. Get the and, yeah, out. she's right there from Marietta. So somebody put her on blast on Twitter. And then the husband, his company, got a $3 million PP, PP PPO, loan, PPO, and, PPO. And, they, uh, and they forgave that shit. And then she deleted wow. all her Twitter, dude. But then they put her ass on blast, dude. So, so they fucking her put stuff. her out. Yeah, dude. <laughs> what a dumbass, bro. Yeah. She was trying to be a cool Karen? Yeah, no, no. Just that, they called her the Costco Karen because she's trying Costco to do that. Karen. Why do these people with EBT shop at Costco fucking and this and that? Exactly. Yeah, and you're doing it, bitch. 
<laughs> la pendeja, Karen. I used to, my, my mom was one of those ladies, bro. <laughs> <laughs> my mom was a Karina. She, she'd be like, she'd be like, fucking with her, with her fucking pound of beans <laughs> in one bag, fucking um, a fucking uh, queso fresco. What the other had, chorizo half raw and shit. You know, standing in line, and there's some lady playing with fucking food stamps, and she's a wig card and all that. My mom looking at pinchy well, fell in that cabrón. <laughs> yeah, my mom yeah, used yeah. to be the same way, man. <laughs> Se Come on, man. Come on, man. Cabrón, I was like, hey. I remember one time I was like, I was with my mom and mira esta hija de la chingada y que y no se baña la cabrona. So what's up, like, wait? My mom thought that everybody in Walford just ate at McDonald's, bro. Hey, yeah. But you know what's funny? Why do they get mad at Mexicans when Mexicans pull that card and go, "What the? Get a fucking job! What are you doing yeah. with all this welfare shit, bro? Yeah, yeah. Enough. Six months wasn't enough. Yeah, fuck I need six dude. more months. Eh? Yeah, I need six more. That's man. funny how she that lady was trying to like expose. Somebody, but she really exposed herself. Like, <laughs> bro, a lot of people, you know, man, a lot of people can't think that just be like, She's they a think big because they're, they're, they're people who pay taxes when they buy something at the store or they do taxes because you're a homeowner and all that. They always say, I don't want my tax dollars going there. Bitch, you have no choice. They're gonna, your, tax, <laughs> your tax dollars are going to go somewhere you don't want it. It doesn't matter. It, bro, it, that fucking, it's not Sweden where they're going to tell you where it goes. Eh? Yeah. Fucking, yeah, I know. I don't give a shit anymore, bro. I'm like, fuck them. I don't know where the fuck they're sending our money to, bro. I know, right? It's funny, man. Like, um, when um, they just approved one trillion, what? I don't know. What is it? How much did they just approve? They just approve a shitload of trillions of dollars. You were getting to fight with people over politics, or you know, you still had a politics? Nah, I'm a fucking politician up the ass, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah, I'll go at it with you. Thank you for fighting a good yeah. fight for us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I love politics, bro. I'm, I'm into it, man. Um, I, it's funny how, like, do you get this, too? Because we get, like, I got this. Oh, yeah. You know, bro, stick to comedy. Eh? <laughs> yeah, stick to comedy. Yeah. <laughs> or stick to music. Yeah, stick to music. Stick I, to the rancho. I, I, I try not we to. We have four horses, bro. I, yeah, try, bro. <laughs> I try not to pick sides. I try to say, oh, fuck it. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, we're, we've grown up to be Democrats, and then fucking you get to better off in life and you fucking realize that oh shit you move to you know? Whittier and shit yeah you move to Whittier where the <laughs> girls are prettier remember that so it's, it's, it's like yeah, they you are. Can, yeah. <laughs> so then you kind of like I don't know if you 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 start looking at the real shit like what the fuck are they sending all this money to yeah, fucking dude. countries that don't give a fuck about us bro but in reality, they got deals with these companies, bro. You know, oh, politicians. That's what's going work. down, bro. Ah, come on, They're man. They're making they, an investment to like, get a return, dude. What the yeah. fuck you sending that over there? Well, because I'm going to go over there on vacation and pick it up when I'm done, fucker, you know? Like, like, people say, like, stay out of Nicaragua. How could they, bro? They have a bunch of food companies there. Yeah. <laughs> and they start realizing there's a bunch of new banks there, too. It's like, what's going on here, bro? Yeah, it's crazy, bro. Big and business, I, that. <clears throat> hey, you know, the rich, the rich gets richer, bro. You know, and they just find the way to do it, man. You know, and it's crazy. Is Politics are politics, man. You know, I believe in them. I think uh, a lot of them are full of shit, but they're there. You know, they're giving us Rasa shit right now because they got caught talking shit. With and the recordings? Yeah, and all that. And I get it, you know. It's fucked up, you know. But, hey, it's like, I, I know, you know, Kevin De Leon. I met him before. I'm cool with him, whatever. But, you know, it's like. Heard he has a he, good chokehold. He was just there, bro. <laughs> like he was. It's like we're here, dude. And you're talking shit, and I go, oh, "Okay, cool." And you know, and that it, was fucked and, up. And, and it's funny that you say that because people are like right away they show the two second clip, and I'm all, I don't want to even dive down yeah, on that shit, that especially when you know up. you have an opinion or whatever. But then I go, "What the fuck? Let me see this whole fucking video. Yeah. Let me do a dumpster dive." Then I see the whole video. Come on, you cannot tell me that that fool. If yeah. he hit headed butted me, bro. Yeah. Hey, bro, but he got he got hands on his ass. Yeah, bro. I'll tell you, I would have fucked that That's fool up, too. That's what I'm saying, bro. Motherfucker coming to me in my face, I'm swinging. Lucky, I don't give a bro. fuck, bro. If I'm pat politician or not, I'm swinging at that yeah, motherfucker. I thought fucking I'm Kevin, from the hood, dog. I thought Kevin DeLeon's wig was going to fall off. Like. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was but talking you know to I mean? one of the guys that knows him. I was like, hey, fucking Kevin should link up with fucking Oscar De La Hoya, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fucking get a get a contract over yeah, there, dog. Yeah, Dana White, dog. Yeah? I was like, That's crazy. I mean, look, bro. I mean, L.A., the majority is Latinos, Mexicanos, you know, and it's like, what do you expect, fucker, that we have office, you know? It's like, <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we, we did go to the new uh, mayor inauguration. Fuck yeah, bro. We went and, uh, you know, it was, it's uh, uh, Karen Bass, Karen we were Bass. over there yeah. and, and we supported it. You know, it was cool, man. They had fucking uh, Stevie Wonder. We I got to see fucking Stevie Wonder, bro. That's badass. He dude. performed and shit. That was badass. I got to meet a lot of the people that were there. We seen uh, Harris. You know, the vice president, we've seen her, we've seen the fucking, we were three rows away from the fucking governor, the the mayor, the old governor, 
Yeah, we, it was a lot of politicians. Everybody. It was pretty cool. I'm, I'm into politics. I don't fucking praise them. You were gonna run? Uh, I I do want to run. Lennox? Yeah, I, I want to run one day or something. I can see it. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I I want to run, but I do definitely want to run and make Lopez a change. Lopez and fucking this fool running together, bro. What happened with George? I thought he was gonna fucking run. That's what, That's what I thought too. Time ago, he got, he, he got a sitcom cool now. <laughs> oh, he got a sitcom. I'm yeah. doing good. I got a sitcom now. A lot of work in that too. Nah, bro. but bro, I mean, we we do need speakers, bro. You Danny Trejo should fucking run for mayor of Pacoima, bro. He should. I'll vote. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Baby <laughs> case, 2026. <laughs> 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 Fuck it. I'll fucking support his campaign, huh? You know, it, it, you know. Look, man. At the end of the day, we're we're Rasa, bro. And if I think me growing up is like I've been right here chilling with you the whole day. And 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 when you did talk about comedy, you talked about somebody that wasn't Rasa, right? Now I want the next generation that when they're sitting here and they have their podcast, they're gonna bring you up, bro, because yeah. they grew up with you. You know what I'm saying? Us growing up, you know, I'm 43, so me growing up, I didn't grow up having an entrepreneur that was that was Mexican. Who the fuck was I praised? Who had a record label that I looked up to and said, "Oh, that motherfucker has a record label. I want to be like him." Nobody was Mexican that has, we had a record label. So we try, we're try we trying to give that example. And because of us, now there's fucking over 100 record labels that are fucking, that have platinum artists. And now, you know, uh, a kid in school can say, hey, I want to be like that guy right there. I want to own my record label and I want to drive a, a Lamborghini or whatever, but I want to work like that guy. We want to be that example. I mean, you, you know, it's like we, we, we praise the, the African-American community because... That's who we grew up with. Even though we want to say que no, pero that's who was on TV and Living Color. Fucking, Albums you know. Albums being sold. You know, Eddie Murphy. Being sold, Eddie Murphy. Fucking Bill Cosby and all that shit. You know, yeah, everything. Bro. So it's like, hey, bro, don't blame us for it. You know, we grew up with that shit. Friday, the movie, everything. Yeah, well, that's it's, you know? it, it seems too when you brought that up that a lot of people say there's a big old division between the black and Mexicans. I think that's like a lot of media shit, yeah, bro. Yeah, that's bullshit, Because we, we, we do like... My, when I look at a comedian, go, oh yeah, all my black friends. I'm like, all right, motherfucker. Like, do you got real black friends, or are they just entertainer black? Yeah, friends? they're entertainer. Yeah. Now, you, once That's you see difference. a fool that he grew, he still keeps. You get it, bro. It's like we're not all like ready to fight each other, bro. Yeah, I yeah. know that bullshit that happened when they're beating the shit out of the street vendors and shit. You didn't. See, we could have went ham. My I supported that shit. Nah, you know I, mean? I mean, but you know, it's just shit that happens as part of the fucking street yeah. sometimes, bro. Yeah, uh, but you know, I I, I did I did think that uh, coming from a street vendor myself, I feel that shit. Yeah, and, bro, and you know what is. I never, I never got robbed by a Raza. And, we, and I'm going to tell you that shit, being straight fucking up. We got robbed, and it was by the Negros. You know, and that was who was doing the crimes, whatever. But at the end of the day, bro, I'm not going to hate them for it. You know, because, you know, if, if, if I'm not going to blame everybody for a couple of fucking knuckleheads. You know what I'm saying? Because I got best friends that are black, bro. I got business partners that are black. I work with a lot of different people, man. And, and I low ride with a lot of black dudes, bro. And I, I get along with them perfect, you know? But I got real street friends, you know, real that I grew up with fucking growing up having black friends. So going back to that, it's like us, we need to give that example. And that's why I fuck with you heavy because to me, you're rasa, bro. And a lot of comedians fuck with you because I see them try to act like you. And <laughs> and, a, and a lot of comedians try to act like George Lopez. And, you know, I just wish George Dude, Lopez George, was bro. more rasa, you know. I don't know what they're talking about over here, man. But <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at? I'm looking at everything. I'm looking at everything. <laughs> I can see through the walls, eh? <laughs> Is that Paul Rodriguez? I'm right here. <laughs> All right, let's get hey, out of here. I, I, remember, I don't want to beat up an old man. Huh. <laughs> Paul Rodriguez. Uh, <laughs> I met P-Rod, his son. Fuck that was yeah, cool. Dude. The rat ass street skater. Yeah, bro. fuck uh. yeah. He's badass. Fuck with his shoes. What's up, fool podcast? Hey, man, back in the days, there used to be a club on on fucking um by the old um Zodis, but now it's a Best Buy. No, now it's a Food for Less, right there La on Zodis. Right there on fucking. <laughs> ah, um, where's that? You remember fuck? that market? La Zodis. Zodis, bro. When they closed down, it became Circuit City. Barely, bro. Uh, La Zodis, fuck, bro. Man, um, what, Rodeo? No, <laughs> what's the, what's that street, bro? Where, where Rodeo? Where the where the Ralph with the fucking um Best Buy is in Boyle Heights. My brother got shot there. Fuck. In Boyle Heights. Oh, right La Zona Rosa. No, that's gonna be uh, that's first street first, right? yeah, first street first. yeah first street on first street and um there's a there's a there's a there's a quebrita club right there bro la zona, la zona rosa, rosa. No, that's no, no 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 that's no rosa that, that's that's a first street but further up okay, bro yeah, 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 by yeah. cummings and first uh, street and what Grande vista i think oh 
Es el es el, ranchito, el corona. El corona. Oh, el corona, ya, yeah, that's el corona, bro. Yeah, fuck, that's, that's old school, bro. bro. I went there with that's my, a what's up. I went, I went there with my fucking, <laughs> my older friends. Like, they were like three years older than me, but so they, were, they, were, they were to Kidarita back in, right there. in 1992. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we went there, bro. There was a fucking tour bus outside. I never heard of these dudes. But they were like the old the man was standing outside just making out with all the chicks in line, bro. <laughs> Lalo Mora or what? Yeah. <laughs> Lalo Mora grabbing the tear on. Uh, we Mora. talked about that, bro. Where we sent them we sent them grabbing yeah, those bro. titties. Everybody blamed the chicks, not him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> They're throwing him on him, bro. He's an old man. He's trying to survive. Look, what if he fell, bro? Bro, I, I've been <laughs> there. <laughs> no, no, I've been there with old bad. artists. And they fucking, those chicks are fucking, man, they got no respect, bro. bro dude, you I want to make out, I huh? told man, this fool. Grab my tit. You know, I'm like, fuck. I seen, a, that one time I seen uh, El Commander right there in Fresnillo, uh, Lalo Mora was there that night. Yeah. And, um, dude, a ch girl jumped out on stage. She had to be like, not even like 23 Kissed years old. and everything. Macked on him to grab it. And another, dude, they wouldn't stop. Yeah. And he finally said, por favor, señorita. <laughs> Tengo que cantar las canciones. <laughs> <laughs> del show. How do you guys do with that, bro? You got, you got these young artists, bro. All these groupies, drugs. You, you know what, bro? It's, it's different now. I think back in the days it was pretty bad. Um, and, and I think the, the artists now are more... They're more laid back. More like business. They're, yeah, they're, 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 they're more business. business. Yeah. They're more business. You don't want to get so, caught in no yeah. video doing some fucking Yeah, yeah. now it's shit. like, fuck it. Everybody's taping your ass. At, at one point, yeah, we even bro. printed off some, some things. Some NDAs. Sign. We, yeah, NDAs. We, we, get, we started giving it to them. I was like, dude, we see you guys partying a lot. You know, you guys might need these, you know. Make sure you, they sign them if they're going to go home with you. So, I mean, yeah. we passed them out. Some of them did get some Yeah, some, we had some the road managers, man. And, you know, some girl tried to blackmail one of the artists back in the days. Oh, you know, I'm going to tell everybody that you... Fucking harass me and I'm like, no, you're not. You got an NDA on your fucking ass. You know, yeah. it's like, was it an was it NDA or was it? Uh, no, I don't think it's called an NDA. I think it was like a, like something that they voluntarily like hang out with them. You know, like, <clears throat> like it wasn't no sexual thing or whatever. They can't blame him for a sexual act or something like that. Like a trip slip? <laughs> yeah, like a trip slip. Like, like yeah, because it was... Yeah, well, a, an attorney was like, hey, you got to get these shit signed, bro, because, you know, you got to... avoid future problems. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and yeah. they tried to black. We're like, oh, no, you don't. So they had an attorney call us, and we just sent that paper, and the attorney never reached out to us again. So uh, when is the next yeah. show, next next um, bro, we, we, event? Bro, we're only taking about, like, 20 days off. The next event is January 18th. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple of shows actually. Where at? Yeah, go to Monterey, uh, California. No, hell Salinas. no, Microsoft, Microsoft, right here. Microsoft. Yeah, the Microsoft. Yeah, bro, fuck yeah. Yeah, we we just sold one of our artists just sold out uh, the Microsoft Junior H Damn. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, and then huge, Fuerza Regida sold out the crypto. crypto. So that was fucking badass. And then yeah, that's fucking crazy, yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, dude, they did the full capacity of a sold out real concert. You know, uh, those are mad that was pretty numbers, badass. Bro. Yeah. So then um, we're coming back on the 18th with Junior uh, with uh, Edición Especial. They're from Culiacán, Sinaloa. Hell yeah. Where I'm yeah. from. Yeah. New yeah? edition. No, yeah. Adolfo Ruiz Cortines, Sinaloa. Arale. Right next to los, right next to los mochi, wasabi, wamuchi. Yeah, That's you right. go over there? Really? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I admit that we freaked our papers, bro. <laughs> it's a dusty ass town, bro. <laughs> they should be, eh? be a truck, bro, that just water the whole street. <laughs> but they won't be dusty. But polvo. Yeah. Well, people were still picking cotton yeah, when I was over there, bro. Yeah, they were on Pichy it. Bichi algodón, bro, and sacks, dog. Yeah, and slacks. Yeah. They were no bichi sacks. Oh, los sacos. Sacos de algodón, bro. They were picking cotton, dog. Yeah. These fucking Mexicans were picking cotton, and my uncle was in a truck just chilling, smoking a Marlboro, <laughs> while they were stacking it, bro. Just super bizarre. Pichi el chuy, bro. That el fool one arm. Yeah, one arm. <laughs> that fool, bro. My my brother. They sent my brother to live with him for three months. He was like 12. My brother came back with more skill than my dad, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I fucking yeah. drive an 18-wheeler and park it. He knew how to fucking drive a fucking tow truck, a water truck. Lethal, hey, in Mexico, bro. you learn all that shit, bro. His head was rough for no everybody no else. It's a transit, La neta. No, Mexico is a shit. You learn Fuck how to yeah, drive. Bro. You know, at early hey, age. when you're in Mexico, bro, if you sleep late, they tell you they call you lazy immediately, bro. Yeah, yeah, right. Picture my one. The wind must be not dormir. Real quick, bro. <laughs> right here, bro. In LA, you can sleep forever, right? <laughs> See, that's yeah, LA, you're good, you know? It's like, dude, I, I was telling my mom the other day, I was like, hey, like, we grew up in a really small pad in Venice, and, and it was a fucking, I would, I would say, probably not even fucking 400 square feet, come on. You know, it was small, but. It was me and my brother slept in the living room. My sister and my mom and my dad slept in the room, little ass room we had. 
And then plus our fucking cousins that got here from Mexico who sleep in the fucking room <laughs> in the in the in the living room with us, bro. Patas, Damn, patas, viejo. That's what I told <laughs> my <laughs> mom. I was telling her, hey, fuck, how they're fucking feasting, bro. I you know? hate that shit, patas, bro. <laughs> and that's an unusual steal, yeah, dog. Yeah, dog. You, you couldn't like, get a sleepover with no blanket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking and those uh those blankets were fucking shit, bro. They would hold that smell, carajo. I hate, bro, when you would get like. Some, you were like somebody would use your blanket with patas oh. and you sleep on the next day and you lay the wrong side, you, the you, wrong fucking, side? you put the blanket on the, the foot side bro on your <laughs> mouth without even knowing bro you go like this <laughs> to get all cold Marcos. and you smell the patas bro oh, bro fucking yeah. queso bro that yeah, yeah 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 that, that, that tiger going that tiger going <laughs> <laughs> bro what, that was a shit right <laughs> but, I mean man I used to argue with my mom man like hey stop <laughs> fucking letting them use my fucking blanket you know <laughs> Fuck that, bro! I'm wearing your Dodger shirt, huh? <laughs> I, I, I used to have some cousins that would that would work graveyard, so I would leave to school, and they would sleep during when we were in school, you know. And I would get home fucking pissed. Same shit, hey, my blanket smelling like straight patas, bro. I like, know my fucking uncle wore my Dodger helmet to fucking do construction, bro. I should have protect shit, dog. <laughs> He the died that day. <laughs> the plastic for that, yeah, bro. How many weekend? Yeah, you should have nachos, bro. <laughs> That's fucking crazy, bro. Hey, we, dude. So, uh, man, I want to invite you, bro. So, we just became official. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, for the Dodgers, we just like, became. We just got some seats, man. Tickets. We got some season tickets on there. Hell yeah, bro. We got some dugout tickets. So Damn, you're gonna have to come bro. out with us, bro. I'm down, dog. You guys are gonna have to come out with us, bro. So I'm, I'm down, down, bro. Yeah. I'm down. So we're gonna have to go one day, bro. Yeah, they gotta let you throw out the first pitch one day, bro. No, no I, he, he well, kind of did um, almost. Well, they gave me a choice. They said either that first they called me for the first pitch and then they said well either you do the first pitch or you'll be the but we got a game. new one we we got the 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 person of the of the game yeah. uh so it was like the the person of the Dodger game and they give you a um since I did a lot of charity and we did a lot of charity with our we have a a, a charity company called uh, Humilde House of Charities and when they did that we what had, do they do so we we did we do a lot of a lot of community work where. We uh, help out a lot of schools, uh, donating um, uh, toys during the holidays, clothes, shoes. Um, now we're we're helping with a lot of like, uh, you know, the a lot of schools in Watts, South Central, and Compton, and shit like that. We're trying to help out the parents with the funds, you know, like just not give them ferian, but we do want to help, you know, pay some light bills and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, and, and so our Minda House of Charity started, and um, and sorry guys, and and when we started. It was for that because we used to donate so much fucking money, but we didn't know where the fuck the money was going. You know, we're like, hey, well, we donated this money to this charity. Not that way. So we're like, fuck that. Let's start our own, you know, charity. So we did. And the Dodgers found out and they said, you know what? We want to gift you a check. We want to gift you a check. I think it was for 25, 20, 20. How much? Twenty five thousand. Yeah, they gave us twenty a twenty five thousand dollar check yeah. to to open our bank account for the. The, the you know the 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 foundation, the, the foundation. Yeah. and that's when we said fuck it you know what let's man let's get some season tickets man so we went and we were thinking about getting some third line and we're like fuck no some dugouts bro I and mean, let's go yeah. bro so we got some dugout tickets Fucking and we out dude. there now man. so you, you guys are gonna join us man i'm and, down bro you know so you guys definitely got only ones with the one dodger game last year <laughs> i seen yeah. one on tv yeah you didn't go last year at all no, we, no, i didn't go last year at all i went, to the, I went to the last game you should game, go more than me the yeah. last game before the pandemic was the last Dodger game I went to. It was fucked up last like, year, huh? Oh, dude. Man, it was fucking, nah, I don't know, man. We had to, how the fuck are you going to have the best fucking season and then get kicked out? Analytics quick? player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly analytics. What happened, dude. Well, now we have no superstars. I'm like fucking worried now. I'm like, okay, what the fuck yeah, are you doing? Yeah, I know, dog. They, you should give them the check back. I know, right? <laughs> no, I, no I, I texted the chick and I was like, yo, any refunds? And she was like, <laughs> discount on the seats. She started, she put LOL. I said, I'm serious. I hope they do something, bro. They, they will, dude. Man, they they reset Kershaw, right? For one year? Yeah, fucking Kershaw. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, she get right? rid of him and sign yeah. th 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 three good people of color with that, with that money. Something. Yeah. <laughs> well, they said, you know, supposedly they said there's a lot of, uh, of people, a lot of players underneath moving up. That they got badass fucking players. They got this shortstop that they were talking about the other day. He's pretty fucking badass, bro. He's, he's half Mexican, half Puerto Rican. So let's see what he Mexican. does. Mexican. Mexican. Exactly. Hell yeah, dog. What's up, fool? What's up, fool? What's Mexican. Up, fool? He refried bean with bananas. Hey, I fucking ba, ba. I like I like the name, bro. What's up, fool? What's up, fool? Podcast. How long? How much, what episode is this? Four sixteen. Four hundred sixteen. Yeah, man. No fucking way, bro. 
How you do it, bro? Just show up every week, bro. <laughs> Try to stay sober for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> People are chatting. What are they saying? Lies? Oh, a lot of lies. No, a lot of stuff. What's up, Fool about- Podcast? Man, so that's crazy, bro. Harmony, North Carolina. Harmony, homie. North Carolina. Man, bro. I love the Mexicans, man. Hey, you, you, <laughs> it, it, How do you find employees and assistants? Yeah, doing all this stuff because you have a lot of good people who work yeah. hard for you. Yeah, we're blessed. We're Not blessed. us, bro. We got everybody that works with us wants to be famous, too. <laughs> yeah. We get somebody well, to record my video. That fool putting his videos up. In. You, you know oh, what? I'm about to fall out of the stool, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Elbow him real quick. Dick, no, you're just making me laugh right now. <laughs> It's like, fool, dog. You're supposed to be filming me, dog. Oh, shit. Hang on real quick. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I didn't know, bro. Come on, man. You think you're here for good looks? So, <laughs> <laughs> he talked about the potential underground thing of carrying somebody's back, yeah. you know, and working hard and working your way up. So, well, I'll tell you. So the I'm question, pretty sure you, you the had homies in the beginning. One of the words was you had to nah, drop those out. fools, right? So, but the question, those, eh? so were, were people were able to hear the question or no? So I, yeah, he, how do you find people to work with you, man, that are consistent, that are responsible? Yeah. Reliable. Because you get a lot of reliable. Because you get a lot of homies. That, like yeah. I, I get homies. Go, Felipe, put me to work. Put me to work. Then I, then I had this dude one time. Okay, bro, record my set. And he, he, he recorded like. The bottom part, and he, he went to go get fucked up and pick up on chicks. Oh, yeah, no, when they do that shit all day. Well, well, what to answer your question is it's pretty dope that you asked that, you know, because um, we I first put up a post on my Instagram. I remember uh, that one a year f- ago. <clears throat> before that, uh, a few years before that, right? Mm-hmm. I put up another post and I say, "Yo, I'm looking for a secretary. I'm looking for an assistant. I'm looking for uh, digital creators, whatever." And we got good people, bro. And our assistants, uh, and then my personal assistants. Now, one of my personal assistants is the office manager. Another personal assistant runs the whole fucking digital side. The other personal assistant runs all the uh, uh, the the tour event side. And then my last assistant. Uh, now he's an A and R, but you know he's an artist relations at the company. He's the lead guy over there. So it's like they all been with me. 24 7 like I, i'm a, i i do a lot of shit all day i work a lot i i love to work i'm, I'm a workaholic I, I as soon as i wake up go to sleep i love doing what i do i don't feel i'm at work you know what i'm saying people go to work i don't man this is my life and um my assistants end up being the people that you see behind creating everything so they already know how i am what i do and then plus they're always around i'm always around these guys so they know it's real good and they know what we're about what we're doing and they kind of run the, the the company like if it was us running it, you know? So we've been blessed with having some good-ass fucking people, bro. Honestly, man. I mean, we have an incredible team, huh? Yeah, I think I, I think, think it comes more from, like, us doing everything. We 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 all did everything here. Like we yeah. So you know flights. how that shit works. Yeah, so yeah. we know how it works. So they see us doing it, they pick up on it, then they end up doing it, and they find whatever they're good at, and they just stick to it, you know? It's, so it's, it's, it's like it's, happened. it's it's like our log- logistics. I mean, we we used to do our the logistics for the bands and all that. We were the managers, we we're the promoters, and and our assistants seen us doing that, and then we would make them doing it. Then they they became the logistic person, and yeah. and now they train someone else to be logistics, and now they're uh, they they're in in a, in a different position, you know, which was pretty cool, man. We have a shitload of employees. It was kind of it was kind of scary the other day that. You know, the our CPA and our attorney calls us and says, hey, well, we got to talk to you. And I'm like, oh, shit, why? What happened? He said, well, <clears throat> um, your total employee, employee payout for 2021 was, you know, $1.8 million. And I said, shit. I said, really? And they're like, yeah, we got to talk about it, you know, because we that's too much. I said, hell no. <clears throat> I said, that's well-deserved, bro. So that money went to... You know, and we talk about it, I don't care, you know, because we want to be that example. You know, we, all of our people that work with us, we make sure they get paid good, you know. Take care <laughs> of your employees and take care of you. We take yeah. care of them like, man, we make sure they're good. We buy their lunch. They're, um, it's pretty cool at the office. They, uh, we make sure the refrigerator's full, their snacks and they have candy or whatever, you know, to get by their day. I think a lot of new people that come in too are like, you, you want to get in the business, you think something, but also they're like, you know, oh, I thought it was going to be like 
more like it's like dude yeah. just chill the fuck out and do your job yeah we, get that. we yeah. get that yeah and of you course. see you know but i mean you got to cultivate that fucking yeah. uh that standard yeah yeah and the people we hire that 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 weren't our assistants and stuff like that i think they kind of get the shit you know they they get all the <laughs> shit from the people that are like hey we fucking worked our ass off here we worked to get where we're at so you better fucking work shit, your ass off easy, you know? dog. yeah ain't nothing easy but we're man we're blessed i can i could tell you man i'm <clears throat> I think we're 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 good. We we're trying to set the best example out there, not only for our employees but for our family and and the fans and and a lot of the groups. We're teaching the bands how to be business partners of us. We don't sign bands on a regular. We be we sign business partners. So we create. You know, we make sure we teach them how to create their company, grow it, make sure they get a CPA, make sure they know how to manage their money you know i try to teach them the way of how to spend it don't go blow your fucking money at strip club and drugs and you know the majority do but you know <laughs> the first round of cash yeah, or yeah but i know i just fucking blow it, it. Bro, you know we get those okay. one hitter one hit wonders bro that fucking I bought a barbershop <laughs> um, <laughs> now i'm the fade master <laughs> <laughs> but i mean you know it's 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 badass comedy, bro man. it's badass man Dude, and, how about um it must be tough right because you have so many bands that you manage and I know that Microsoft show is a big show. Are you getting t people hitting you up already? Man, I need 10 tickets right now. I already fucking put a... I, I, they already got used to me not fucking answering it. <laughs> I think How about I quit. you, Joe? I need two time. tickets, bro. All the time. I know the show's going to start in an hour, but I just found out about the show. Fuck. <laughs> I, 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 I stopped fucking... Exactly. That day, I turned off my phone, bro. Like, I put it on silent. Like, fuck you guys, Basically, bro. they're just telling yeah. you they want a selfie with you that night. Huh? Yeah, I want to yeah, be I in the it. mix. <laughs> I get out it out of here, man. dog. Uh, dude, I know. I know. That happened to you, like in the beginning of your career, man. Like the like people that want to, you know, groupies, bro. But they try to throw this move. Hey, man, we should have dinner, bro. You want to have dinner before the yeah, show? Right? You wanna, <laughs> yeah, they want to come to the fucking show. <laughs> yeah. And then after dinner, you have to go to look at you like. Am I coming with you? You know, fuck <laughs> you stay here and wash dishes. You didn't come here with two extra laminates? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> they want to be in the bag, too. Love it. You know you made it, man, when you got people outside bootlegging your shirt. Eh? <laughs> hey, yeah. know, right? bro, that feels bro, good. so why did this time, I'm driving in the show, and this guy comes up to me, right? No way. And this fucker looks at me, and he goes, Jimmy. And I looked at him, and I go, <laughs> what's up, bro? You know, and he's like, bro, no way. He's like, you want my shirt? I'm like, Fuck you, bro. <laughs> Should arrest your ass. <laughs> like, fuck you, bro. And that he, actually feels good. But know? hold on. I didn't tell you about this. It was the group, and he had me in back of the fucking shirt, bro. Oh, you genius. motherfucker. Yeah, he was like, bro. This is CEO, homie. He was like, bro. <laughs> metal, metal. I, I'm been selling out. I said, bro. I said, you have any kids? He goes, yeah. I go, bless them, fucker. You know, make sure you give them fed. Yeah, don't go fuck that money up, you know? <laughs> make sure you take it back home. He goes, no, bro. You know, this is what me and my wife do. We go to shows. And, <laughs> and bootleg the shirts. fuck yeah. out of merchandise. <laughs> yeah. You should have your yeah. ass beat right now, dude. <laughs> you bootlegging fluffy shirt. I'll just take it. I dropped off my daughter to go see Bad Bunny one day, right? And uh, I go drop them off. And, no, no, it was a, it was a Rihanna Grande. Oh, damn. I go drop them off, right? And they're just fucking pice outside, you know? And he's like, hey, you want to buy a sweater? And I'm like, you know, oh, no. He's like, oh, for your daughter. You know, pa tu hija. And I was like, <laughs> you know, I was like, how you know I fucking drive my daughter, you asshole? You know, oh my and, God, and he goes, bro. bro, so so I bought it from him 50 bucks, bro. Right? Oh, so bootleg, dog. So then I start talking to him and he tells me, <clears throat> Ariana Grande sells her fucking merch before the event. So they don't sell no no they don't sell no merch at the event. It's all pre-sale. Pro Jam does too, I think. Yeah, well, that's what they now do they all do, right? right? Okay. So, so. Yeah, the, Pro Jam does meet and greet and South merge before the show. It's like a, a big ass line. Bro. Yeah. So that gave me an idea for our band. So we started doing that, but trip out. So I start talking to this fucker, and I'm like, "So how much do you sell these fucking sweaters for? Fifty bucks? You know?" And he's all, "If it's popping, popping, we sell them for a hundred bucks." He's, all, "I'm all, but how do you know what they have?" He said, <laughs> "They'll buy a sweater." Right, the like two days before, and they'll try to make it similar to it, but a different color, so that way they won't, you know, say that be they're, too off. Yeah. yeah. They buy them before. They design? You know they buy them before. So. You know, it's funny that you say that because I've been seeing a, like uh, uh, shots with artists now with their backstage laminates and during the tour, and they blur it out now because fools be copying those yeah, laminates crazy, and bro. hopping into the show, yeah. bro. And, but and, you guys snuck into a lot of shows, you know. Yeah. Uh, I always sneak into up. shows. I'm pretty good at sneaking into fucking shows. Dude, Carry a ladder. I've never gotten caught once, so. <laughs> 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 bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good I one, bro. Hey, you know, I snuck into a fucking show. I said, 
Hey, you no, nah, hell no. Nah. I go in there and I'm like, I'm the fucking boss, bro. I own the joint. <laughs> yeah, like I go in there one day. I had my, I told my daughter, fuck, watch, I'll get in. I got, we went backstage. I was like, what's up, bro? What's going on, bro? Everything's good. He's like, yeah, what's going on? I say, hey, bro, another car's gonna come in right now. Make sure you fucking let him in, bro. Do your job, man. Stop fucking fucking up for it. Oh, and he looked at me and he was like, oh shit. So I, I go to the door. I go, hey, what's going on, bro? Everything's good. He's like, yeah, yeah, what's going on, man? And I start talking, you know, like I work there. You know, like I'm the fucking, I'm the manager. Hey, bro, there's a blue car gonna come right now. It's the artist. Make sure you guys fuck it. I fucking walked in, bro. I was like, fuck. I've done that but before, but I've never done telling everybody what to do. I got on my phone. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, I'm right by the backstage door. I'll be in there right now. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it, I got it on me. That's a good right this way, yeah. sir. Yeah. I was backstage. My daughter was like, what the fuck you doing back there? That's How you tight, bro. Yeah, bro. So. You know, I mean, I just we we do shows. I know how. To, yeah, know, that's, that's the other thing too. Cause I've been don't you know, get no like, ideas, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you learn, bro. You know what I mean, yeah. I used to go to the venues before these fools would play, and I just like scope out the venues going through all the doors. So if I ever have yeah. to come back to this venue, boom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, by the way, my daughter didn't want that fucking sweater, bro. Which sweater? That one sweater oh, no. I bought her because it wasn't the official merch. Uh, and I told her, what do you mean? This is exclusive shit you didn't see. She, But did she know that? Yeah, she that fucking knew. Add two R's, bro, not Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> I not bought Rihanna. in bootleg stuff off at a concert that was better than the stuff they were selling inside. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Man, when I, got, when I went to Tom Petty before he passed, man, his shit was expensive, bro. Yeah. $55 for a regular T-shirt. Damn. Oh, you know who's going on tour, bro, and finally charging um, concert real prices? Bruce Springsteen. Oh, because he will never. The last one. He will never sell. He will like, never upsell he'll shows. He'll never a upsell certain, shows. Certain yeah. amount. He'll right? never sell hundred dollar tickets. He'll, it'll just be fifty. And that's it. But now it's his last concert, thousand dollar ticket, bro. Wow. Dynamics. Do you, how oh, do you deal with that, bro? With the bro. dynamics ticket sales, bro. that's fucking us up right now, bro. Dude, no, we, Our, refuse we refuse to add it. And like, and like people, people who don't understand, just say you're buying um, concert tickets for my show, and you're going at eleven in the morning when tickets go on sale. And the first day they go on sale, and everybody's there, they start like because there's so many people buying tickets, and the algorithm goes crazy. That fifty dollar tickets go to to seventy five. Yeah, yeah. We well, you okay you know, with that? You know what we do we cap out. We so on our contracts we do have a cap out. Um, where we don't allow them to sell certain tickets at certain prices, like so you don't let it go can, to two hundred. Yeah, we no hell no. We expect and and you know at first the artist was like, hey, and I said, okay, look, you either want your fan to come to your show, or you want your fan to come to your show and talk shit about you, bro. So you know, and then the majority of the real fans, bro, they they're not CEOs. You know, they're fucking they're 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 nine to five parents that is giving their money to the kids, like we're talking about us, you know, that is giving. Right, right. They got to do their whole shit. Working so, hard for that money, dude. Yeah, man. I don't remember so, um, this, this comedian, I know he passed away, and then like I, I read that another artist named Kate Perry and um, another artist, Billie Eilish, Eilish, too, they would um, they, they, they'll buy the, tic the good ticket themselves and then have a second party bootleg them. Like a, like yeah. a, like a bootleg. Dude, that's them? big right Stopper. now. That's big right so now. So you know what they're doing right now? Oh, it's it's the like biggest. this. I remember... <laughs> The article was like this. The they were called ghost seats. Yeah, and it's like a they cut it like in a diamond right right through the middle. The best fucking seats. It's a diamond. Best seat yeah. in the house. Okay, so look. So now what they're doing if if you have a if you have a hot artist right, and big companies are doing this oh, without saying no names. Yeah, whoever. But let's say you're a guaranteed sold out show. They're gonna sell the show out without even selling a ticket to a regular fucking fan. To, you cannot go on there and buy it. They'll probably, if you, let's say capacity is 10,000, right? Yeah. They're going to sell 2,000 to the fans. 8,000 go to the scalpers. Go to bro. Gary's. Very yeah. tickets. Yep. Yeah, they go to all the fucking tickets. And that, and so you have an automatic sold out show. <clears throat> Your show's really not sold out. Because there's gaps now. Yeah, That's what they're creating. Yeah. They, they, yep. they, they told me that at a show. They said, Felipe, your show sold out already. But if you look around, it might be like 160 people not in the seats. What the fuck? They were the, they were the scalpers. Yeah, they didn't the sell them. But yeah. they, they, they ate them that night. Well, they ate them. Yeah. The person is not there. Yeah. And then so they do another scam now where them. somebody buys my tickets ahead of time, right? And then that person goes sells the ticket to another fan. And then the that person that had the tickets first, he goes gets his money back. Yeah. Oh. Then when that person goes to the ticket to the show, 
They know invalid. Yeah. That's what happened in Mexico. Rata, That's dude. what happened in Mexico with the Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. They fucking did There's, you hear about that? No, what happened? No, well, they 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 want to sue uh, Live Nation, but it's not Live Nation's fault. I mean, that's fucking. That's the, the the hustlers. They buy all these tickets, they sell them, and then they fucking they go return their money back, or they resell your tickets to somebody else. So you can go get a print out of your tickets, right? If you get if you go on the internet, you want to print out your ticket. You know, uh, I think Ticketmaster still lets you do that. You could print out your ticket, you sell that fucking ticket, and it's like, yeah, this is your ticket. Then you go sell the same ticket to somebody else. So they resold their ticket like twenty times, bro. Damn. And they, they could do it out. Uh. Yeah, they could do it. And so now... Psyching your ass out, huh? So there's this Mexican band that came, and they sold out in 30 minutes. And I said, fuck no, bro. They sold to ah. Microsoft in 30 minutes. I said, my fucking ass, bro. I said, no way, bro. I hell no. Nah. So I made a call, and I said, how many tickets sold? I want to know how many fucking tickets really sold. If not, fuck you. I'm not doing my show this year with you, and you need to tell me the truth. And um, the, the callback was like, yo, they only sold 1,200 live tickets. And everything else got sold to scapper, but they did it to live up the band. You know, a lot of promoters will eat it. They'll eat two, three thousand tickets for their bands to look like they sold it out, right. which is fucking stupid, bro. Like, like tickets, like record sales. It's like you're yeah. mind fucking yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. Dude, like, it's so fucking funny how they can just like manipulate little parts of the industry that actually affects everything. Is the fucking I hate whole, that bro. shit, bro. Because fuckers like us that are really out there, turn it up, in fucking the yeah, dude, and really doing that shit. You know, like look, for example, today in the morning we wake up, right? There's a song by Fuerza Regida, and it's number one right now, right? Apple Music in the U.S. We hit number one, and we only have, I think, uh, I think in YouTube we have four million views, five million views, right? And it was trendy number two, right? And in, the, in, the, in, in YouTube. So then there's another band that has another fucking uh, song on number six. And uh, I mean, number eight and the rest are bad money. Right. <laughs> but we, there's another Mexican band that they're in number eight. And I'm like, OK, they have 15 million views. Right. We only have four million views. They're not trending on YouTube. Doesn't make sense. You're padding something. It doesn't make sense to me. And we know the business. Yeah. So then I tell my guys, I go, look, don't worry about it. Let's be organic. If we hit number one, that's who we are. We hit number five. Then that's who the fuck you are. I'm not going to mind fuck you, bro. I'm not going to invest $100,000 to these dudes to put you in number one. I'm not going to do that, yeah. bro. Because then you go mind fuck yourself and you're like, you have all these views and you're not getting your paycheck supposed to look like 100 bucks and you're getting 20 bucks. Fuck that, bro. Yeah. In the end, you, know? you actually, you're cheating yeah. yourself. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. What's up, full podcast? Come on, bro. Where are those tickets at, Philip? Yeah, man. The show's coming up. January 14th. I'm telling you, I'm not going to be in San Luis Obispo, California. January 21st, Tucson, Arizona. January 26th to the 28th, Charlotte, 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 North Carolina. Everybody from Harmony showed up. Yeah. Everybody, February 2nd through the 5th, Pleasanton, California. February 9th through 11th, Fort Wayne, Indiana. February 18th, Bakersfield, California. The Fox Theater. Tickets at FelipeWorld.com. Yeah, man, yeah, I was going to promote real quick the show Good, that we bro. have. December 30th, right? La December 30th, last show of the year, Sound Ready Bros Comedy Bash at the Industry Bar in Hacienda. Starts at 9 p.m. Is also, if, yeah, this man. is only for the podcast listeners exclusive. January 11. It's a podcast night, but I'm going to be at the comedy store for like a quick little set. After the podcast, After the podcast I'm going to go drive over there to the podcast and do the, to the fucking comedy store and do that um, Sam Tripoli show. Yeah, yeah. See you yeah. there, man. A big shout out to Jimmy and Joe, bro. Fuck Jose. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. 14 yeah. horses. Thank you, yeah, dude, brother. That's Thank badass, you. Big bro. Time. Thank nice you. To Thank you, man. That shit. I was going to say real quick that the stuff that we're talking about when the quebradita, quebradita, quebraditas was happening, that's kind of like, um, it was the first show where like you can see Mexican kids proud of like being Mexican, not, yeah. wor not worried about wearing boots and shit. And then the next, this turn, you got, yeah, 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 you got a lot, you got a lot of kids like, dude, that's all these true, little fools. My true. homie El Pariente, he's 34 and he's almost done, bro. Like, yeah. 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 you grew up in a generation yeah. of people who were proud to be Mexican. Yeah. 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 Cause when yeah. I was a little kid, the only people, the only, the only people that were proud to be Mexican were the, were the TV announcers. The TV. They, they'd be on fucking channel CBS. Uh, uh, Jose Amesqua. Uh, How about that one? Jose Alfaro. Jose, Jose Alfaro. Alfaro. Uh, 
Like Alicia Del Valle. Del Valle. <laughs> yeah. And that's when they, that was kind of their way of showing the pride of yeah, the whole name. When I was a kid, you'd be Mexican, they were afraid of be Mexican, bro. What's your last name, bro? Lopez? Nah, Lopes. <laughs> Lopes. <laughs> <laughs> My last name is Garcia, not Garcia. Garcia. Huh? My last name is Robos, not Robles. Tori. Yeah. Who's What's name? so fool? <laughs> what? No, nah, somebody's name the other day that was. Uh, oh, a oh, a or my assistant. Yeah. His name is not Adrian. His name is what is it? Adran. No, no. Adran. 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 Dude, Adrian. some fucking fool. His last name was Reese. He told, "Oh, it's Ruiz, bro." Ruiz. Oh my oh, god, how, how, named shit. after the Ruiz Canal. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. Fuck yeah, carnal. Hell yeah. They call her Nanya. Nanya. Did you get some? Nanya? Hey, dude. For real, bro. During the Quebradita days, my dad was like, he, he Mexican, bro, but yeah. Because <laughs> that's funny, your dad was saying, My dad was like, Pongas unas botas, cabrón. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad, I wanted to, bro. I wanted to. I was like, I ain't that Mexican, dog. My yeah, dad, I, I wanted to. I wanted when to. When Rocking Espanol scene came out, he was all hating on that shit, too. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They were hating on it. Hey, but that was a little worse, though, yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. like, it was rock and roll, but it's like, dick, if your deal, like, fucking started rock and rolling. Yeah, me gusta kiss, wey. Yeah, yeah. Se llaman besos, cabrón. Se llaman besos. My dad was like, Son los buki con panocha. Son los buki con <laughs> yeah, man. Man. No, dad. It's my little besita. I don't say that about them. No, no, no. We're also Cadillacs. So he has vieja, wey. Yeah, bro. Fuck, that's the best, bro. real, though, dog. What's up, fool? Yeah, man. Thank yeah. you. What's up, fool? What's up, fool?